Welcome everyone, we are back. It is another very special show today. We have got some of the biggest names in the game. We got a huge prize pool. And we got an amazing guest, Mike Wasserman joins us. Mike, how are you? Doing good, doing good, glad to be here. I'm a big, big fan of the show and uh, hopefully I can provide some insights for you. And well, the audience. listen, you are formally ranked number one on Pocket Fives. If anyone is from the online poker world back in the day, they know how impressive that is. And you can see over 8 million in online earnings. I know you play as many as 12. 16 tables at a time so excited to have you here today as we always get to see such a treat in the gg millions with the big prize pool today almost a half a million for first a little more with the winner series going on there's a lot of people there's a lot of people a lot of entrants and a lot of big names so here we go 2.4 million prize pool and we will play to a winner this is from sunday as always 145 eastern you join us with a big guest and we're going to see who is going to beat the best as it's 378 to second 292 to third first is a whopping 491,000 us dollars and we are going to get to see some very talented players as we take a look at this final table lineup i'm curious if you played with some of them of course some are usernames so you may not you may have and you don't know if you played with them in real life there is the chip leader with 66 big blinds the short stack very talented Pablo Silva with seven big blinds. But of course, as we know, anything can happen very quickly. And actually, interestingly enough, the only players that have won GG Millions are our shortest two sacks. Ottoman, also very talented, three-time winner on the GG Million as he has got his work cut out for him as he is short. But uh, we'll see what happens today. Pavel, another crusher in the mix, opening up here the Queen 10 off with a very healthy stack. Anyone you played with, Mike, does any name stand out here for you? Uh, I've played with Pablo a little bit. Uh, I think a lot of these guys probably play higher stakes than me. I'm mainly playing, uh, like the high value, higher stakes stuff, uh, online and live and mostly just grinding mid stakes. So may, might be out of my, uh, my range of like playing too many hands with these guys, but Pablo I've played with and heard of Alex I've played with and heard of, um, it's a little hard to see uh i think that's it i don't know what their screen names are maybe their screen names would ring a bell well, a little more I, I, I got i got i mean what a treat of a start well look at this the king deuce off from two of the big stacks here out of the small blind and you see pavel's wheel spinning look at this he finds the four bet with queen 10 off i mean this is a highlight hand of the year to start like literally we're in 2024 this is a big one half a million at first and this is an absolute there must be some history here because he's a bit unconventional three bet and a light four bet generally going to give a lot of credit out of the small blind here and this is some high level stuff we're seeing and am then is going to get out of the way as we will start out with a bang here welcome everyone happy new year again if you were not with us last week we are going to see pavel take control of this final table and assert himself and apparently likes queen 10 <laughs> offsuit because he is back under the gun and firing with it so pretty pretty impressive start there I, I, not a conventional hand and and before we get into more analysis i want to ask red or black let's do it let's have a dinner wager let's get the audience a 50 or 100 dollar i'll take red 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 all right red flop oh. that's the call you got that you can either pick first or second or third if you win and uh audience giveaways as usual my twitter pin tweet going up if it's not already up i think it is up actually i will get that link for you can retweet it that's either gonna be uh well that'll be a 50 hour giveaway and then we'll have a 50 or 100 later in the show so please please enjoy yourself strap in we got a long day nine-handed big money this one's gonna be a fun one and we will play to a winner of course this is the final table 10k buy-in from sunday that we finish on Tuesday. So what do you think of that King Deuce off? Is that in your playbook? And then how about the four bet? Nine handed at the final table is generally not in my playbook. Uh, I, I reserve those types of three bets for situations where I have, well, when I have more history with somebody or, you know, in shorthanded play, not against the UTG open too often. Um, so, yeah. Well, we're going to, we're seeing a flip right here. Nines, Pablo Silva. We said he's short stacked. He's dangerous. Can he fade the six outer on the river? It was a flip. He does. And again, the two most popular countries in the GG Million, in my opinion, at least from what I see, is Brazil and Austria. They just tangoed. And now Pablo is back over a million in chips and in the game. And again, him and Ademar are the only GG Million winners. Let me see the oh, I missed the flop. What was it? It was all in. It was red. red it was red. You said red. It was seven of hearts, three of spades, four of diamonds. So you get either first pick or second and third. Uh, yeah, we got to do this quickly because chips are flying. <laughs> yeah. The first few hands. Uh, I'll take second too. 
All right, so you'll you'll pass over to me to first. I'm I'm uh I'm happy with with, with Pavel, man. He I is, knew you were gonna that, take Pavel, obviously. Yeah, that, I mean, look at the play, <laughs> the Queen Ten off, just going for the four bet, sending a message, putting it on the line, and I will take him. So you get second and third. Okay, give me give me a second so I can uh take in these stack sizes and let's see. Uh I'm a big fan of the Brazilians, but I think I'm just going to go pretty much based off stack sizes here and take the light three better. Uh, I, I can't, I can't really see who his name is. AM, is a, AM then the, the AM then. Yeah. AM then. And then I'll take Alex as well. Alex Garcia. Right. And you said Alex Garcia, correct? Yes. Okay. So. Hmm. Hold on. Let me take a look at my notes here. We got, we got some impressive resumes here. I'm going to, Bit of a tough decision. I will go with man. Arthur doesn't really have any any res hasn't played a lot here. I don't know how much experience he's gotten. Then smart money. I think I will go with man. Uh, should have looked a little closer. Yeah, I'll take. I'll I'll go smart money. Okay, I'll take uh, the big blind. All right, so we got our turn. Then what do we got? We still got a few more. I'm gonna jump over to. I will take. I'm gonna take Pablo Silva, the Brazilian. You know, I'm I'm biased to Brazil. I love Brazil. Going Brazil. I get it. Uh, I'll take Vlad. Okay, you got Vlad. I will take Ademar. I got the, I got the, I got the, I got the, the, the GG Million Champions. I got the, between them five titles. I'll take Ademar, and then I believe that leaves. Is there one more? Uh, Gurgly, you got the the Austrian, then right? You got one extra guy there. Perfect. Yeah. All right, we got a okay. dinner wager. The audience that's going to be a hundred. If one of my players win fifty, if one of Mike's win again, Mike, so much experience, played online for a long time. Have you ever taken a break, or have you just been pretty much? playing straight since since 2008 i've tried to take many breaks and it's something that uh i could get better at uh i've i i don't think i've ever taken more than like two weeks off wow um i really try not to miss sundays even during the holidays uh patrick but, leonard yeah. he'll tell you He'll tell you that you shouldn't be yeah. doing that and you don't. And Pavel shouldn't be missing a uh, combo draw bet. And he is going to knock down the pot over five mil, put the pressure on really, of course, seems like a mandatory spy. He's got six high, He's got a straight draw and the flush draw. So he does put the pressure on. He is absolutely going to town right now. Not taking off literally any hands, 5.2 million, looking good, looking dangerous, has control, has a good seat as well. And uh, I mean, I guess in theory, Garcia has got a great seat with the direct left of the chip leader, but Pavel is opening a lot and being very active and also showing the willingness to four bet light. So I think he's, you know, he's dangerous, right? And as the players see the replay here, they kind of get to see the, we're on a delay, of course, but they're going to see it's, it's scary when someone's willing to put in that light four bet, someday if you, Oh, I'll put a light three bet, you know, he's opening wide, no problem. But when you're willing to put it on the line with the, with the queen 10 off and put in a lot of your chips, that is definitely difficult to play against here as ICM is not always respected on the GG millions. People want the title. They want the glory. And yeah. that's what makes poker fun. Mike, that people approach these final tables differently. They're not just uh, trying to ladder. Some people are going for the glory, the win and putting pressure on, as we see here, a pretty interesting spot. Threes versus ACE King suited button versus big blind and the small blind actually, you know, not, not a lot of chips is going to be interested here. Yeah. Uh, I think my last pick is about to bust. I think Ace-8 jams here pretty frequently, and Ace-King gets it in, and we see what happens. There is a universe where I guess Ace-8 folds, Ace-King three bets, and threes finds like a shove, but I don't know if that's going to happen too much nine-handed. Uh, so there, there's multiple ways where all the money goes in. Yeah, I, I don't blame him here. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, Ace King Suda doesn't think long. Got to be happy with the spot, and of course, gonna love it when it sees the Ace Eight off suit. So pretty good position. Of course, you got to get through wow. all five as the Eight spikes out. No spade on the turn. Gonna need a pure King now. The reverse flip script, and it is not. And that is a tough 
beat there as we see an eight gets shown by Pavel, a little <laughs> insult to injury, just saying, hey, that was even more unlucky than it even appeared. And that is a tough swing. What a scene, a knockout, a pay jump for all those involved. And now still nine-handed and a a big, big moment there for Gurgley. I don't see, did a three come out or no? I don't think so. No. So yeah, eight, ace eight really just found a miracle kind of get there. But again, that's part of it, right? Mike, you, you're aggressive people. So you could fold and just keep getting short or you take a spot and that's part of it. You can get lucky. You know, ace eight to ace king Suda is not a guarantee and he is going to going to hit and capitalize. Now he's pretty healthy with 2.2 million on 30 big blinds and smart money is a very, this is definitely a spot where he's going to realize he's going to get a three bet pretty light. And this is a, a, one of those solver spots, right? The King Jack Suda, one of those ones where you could definitely be playing aggressively. He does pass to pop bell and he was dominated. I would have a hard time. Well, they don't know that he four bet the, the queen 10 yet. So like, he's going to be able to get away with this for, I don't know. What's the delay 30 minutes. Yeah, I believe so. Just just over so 30 minutes. For 30 minutes, he's just going to wreck everybody. And then he can just slow down, you know? And he's obviously smart enough to know that everybody here is. Um, but yeah, to answer your question, like, you can't pass on too many spots. Uh, even in slow structures like this, I think you need to maintain chips. Uh, so, like, taking the ace eight shove, I think, is, it seems pretty mandatory to me. Um, also, you know, if, if ace king, if the guy doesn't have ace king in the big, like he doesn't call with threes on the button, right? He's just raised folding. So normally he's just like picking up that pot, uh, with no resistance. So I think it's, I, what I'd be curious to know is like, how wide is he actually shoving there? You know, is he shoving ace deuce off? Is he shoving like king five suited? Like, I want to know that's going to be the, the curious thing about this final table and about high stakes final tables in general is like, what, what do people do with the bottom of their range? Cause it's all, you know, with the middle and top of their range, it's not as interesting. Let's, I want to see the bottom. I'm sure we will, right? We already saw the four bet. We saw the three bet with the King deuce off. It's just wild. Yeah, we, we, we've also seen AM then put pressure on there. He goes with the eight, seven off understanding that there's some very similar stacks and, Ademar, Ademar, who is a very competent player, understands ICM, isn't going to want to call off light. And shoving first in is powerful. This is going to be not great news for him, though, at the ace four off, as he has got not a lot of options here to not put the money in. And sevens are going to not, I mean, you like it. You like it a lot. It's still you're covering at sevens, and you get a situation such as this where you have one over. Let's see, can it hold the wheelbarrow draw? Is there backdoor hearts available? A sweat. This is a good sweat. To start your day picks up additional outs five ace heart can he do it and no the three-time champion of the gg million will go out in ninth place good game pay jumps around and the big moment there for i believe the ukraine flag two ukrainians with are in the tournament and both healthy four million now look at that look at that three man four man row of massive stacks, 4 million, 4.2, 4.3, 5.5, 4.6. There's a lot of chips on that row as Pablo is short. A couple other sh shortest stacks, and we should see some play today now. Stacks getting deeper quickly as the players are very healthy, and this has been fun. What a start to the final table. Hope you're enjoying us. Let us know where you're watching from. We are here to call a winner. Mike Wasserman, you can follow him on Twitter. He also does coaching. We'll talk some more about that, and he is a very active player coach in the community so mike yeah again thank you for the time today appreciate it. i know you had to kind of move around rush around here today and, and get here so we appreciate that and should be a fun one today yeah totally happy to do it so he just flops trips here i imagine wait so he opened the button small blind called big blind called Yeah, I think uh, maybe King Queen's like a little bit too good to see bet here. Maybe he see bets like his Jack tens and like hands that have more backdoor possibilities on the button because it's a pretty dry board texture, but it goes check, check, check. So I don't think Jack five is going to get much action here. I think he's a man like feels like a pretty mandatory bet here because this is like all over his range from the big and he should have a bunch of like gut shots and straight draws and fairly weak hands that are leading here. So, I mean, I guess we could see some, something crazy happen here, but I imagine it's just going to go bet full fold. Yeah. This is where the game is so interesting and the best seem to just get it right. They know how to, what their range is perceived as they understand, you know, the, 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 
what sizings to go, what hands they're targeting, what their range looks like. So here, of course, I mean, in the big blind, he's got, he's got so many possible hands, six, four, six, eight. He's got spade draws. He's got all these different things, gut shots that he could be betting. And he happens to have no customer on, but this is something where he definitely could, you know, someone's going to be calling and getting value here as Alex goes for a little larger sizing and does not have a customer. He does pick up the pot though. 5 million joins Pavel as only 5 million chip holders and we are gonna again see pavel get to work on the button here with 910 suited he is going to be opening wide and you know this is definitely a, a welcoming site and again no one really has anything to play with here he is this is a guy if you look him up i believe i forget exact how much, i could look it up on the head of mob i think he has like eight nine million in earnings he's definitely won some major tournaments live as well and he is i would say the most experienced player maybe other than pablo silva but pablo kind of handcuffed here with a short stack, as you see him go to work under the gun, plus one, eight-handed, ace-10 off, sort of bottom of the range. And here we go with a, a tough decision, though. Ace-10 suited, the king-queen off, does just call. And, you know, king-queen off also with a big blind, kind of a tricky hand to play multi-way out of the big blind, but a, a, another hand you could uh, you could argue to, to get aggressive with, although I think it's tough with the under the gun, plus one raise and those stack sizes. He does just call and flops well. Although not always easy to, to uh, get to a river. Let's see if he's able to get this pot his direction as the king 7-7 seven, seven, two heart flop comes out. Yeah, I don't think he can find a squeeze when with with the raise off of like 12, 12 and a half bigs in early position, the flat, which should be like a, a fairly strong range. And he also is going to have some traps flatting there. I don't think it's a great spot to squeeze with the king queen, even though it's like really tempting with that hand. Um, well, yeah. this this hand, this <laughs> card is going to make him feel a little more comfortable. I mean, loses to aces, loses to pocket kings, blocks kings, seven seven x not in Pablo's range in any way, even if it was whatever, right? It's uh, that's one of those ones you have to just chalk up. So now going to feel pretty good and interesting because Pablo Silva now with the ace ten does block the. The heart draws, but you know, ace ten, he gets called here. It's pretty pretty much his opponent has a king or a flush draw, most likely. I guess there could even be some ace highs that he would he would have, like you know, ace jack or something that just decides not to squeeze. But either way, Pablo doesn't love this position, right? He's got the ace ten off, and, and I guess he in his head he could think there are some hands he's beating, some heart draws that just kind of give up, don't want to bluff off here. So he does check back and sees. The king queen will take the pot, and Pablo is in kind of critical condition chip wise here, as he is going to be taking the big blind next hand, and he has 600k. Curious if he'll just rip this in, or wait for a better spot, eight handed here. I mean, you don't really want to take the blinds again and go through, but also you realize like you're just going to be dominated. So he does do it. Interesting. I thought that would that's a pretty close spot. Yeah, you're not happy to shove into everybody there. Like if he had that hand in the hijack, he would definitely shove it. Uh, but he, he just kind of can't do it here. I think that check last hand on the river is a really curious check. Uh, there's a lot of like give ups and thin, like I think it might be better to be betting your King queen there and getting thin value, trying to get thin value. Maybe he, I don't know. Maybe they have history and and Pablo is capable of like turning hands into bluffs or really thinly value betting like eights there or something or nines. But I think that was a, a interesting check with the king queen. Yeah, am then I'm pretty sure these players are aware how aggressive he is because of that indicative of that queen ten off four bet. That's just my hunch that they're aware he's pretty pretty wild so he is gonna open up here of course queen queen off a opening hand with his stack under the gun eight-handed so he does pick it up no resistance and uh i got i got a feeling we're gonna see fireworks say mike this looks like one of those lineups just to, that people are, are gonna go for it and we are seeing some action in all ends already so let's see what happens here as pavel opens again man he is he's playing a lot of hands he really is he's getting sort of like not super premiums. He's getting a lot of decent hands that he can play. And with that stack, it's nice, right? Because he does have a license to open light. And he is doing that. And then, man, you just feel like this guy doesn't want to ever give up. 10-4 off. Roger that. Is he going to play or close the action or just give up? Or as we've seen, maybe even three bet as he did with the King Deuce off. But he does pass on that. So that this is like a pretty high-pressure ICM 
uh, situation right now because you have the, I mean, it's not ideal for Pavel because he's opening into the short stacks, but once Vlad and Pablo fold, uh, AM then and smart money, like if he opens in this spot and it gets through all the way to the blinds, these guys really don't want to V pip against them because they're kind of like lighting EV on fire. Um, by by possibly busting although uh they are pretty deep they could take some flops with them but in general like the final table strategy is like when the super short stacks fold the blinds really don't want to defend marginal hands so hands ends up the hands end up playing a lot more straightforward when you're the original razor and you're playing against the blinds and you have position they play their hands like really face up but this is a very high level, you know, I'm a mid stakes grinder. I'm, I'm really used to being able to exploit those things um, at mid stakes, but at high stakes, man, um, maybe, you know, they're, they're capable of, of taking advantage of weak ranges and attacking those. And this is an interesting spot too here, but he's check. He defended the small and check raised this board to what's the sizing 366. Wow. I mean, it's kind of the bottom. It's probably one of the worst hands he has there. Uh, I don't mind it. Like, if he turns a king, he's open-ended. If he turns a heart, he has a heart draw. If he turns a nine, uh, he's open-ended. And then he still has equity against, like, some of his C-betting range, right? That's ahead of him. Uh, like, his ace highs and stuff have to fold. He didn't even have to use a big sizing. So I, I, I like the aggression. I mean, in general, aggression is really going to pay off, especially in final table situations where exactly like that where he's attacking a medium stack size and this guy doesn't want to put more chips in there with a marginal hand where he's going to have to face pressure on future streets and take a you know have a possibility of busting before the two short stacks now yeah also uh a player from thailand who is going to play of course king tensuda we've seen him be fairly aggressive and th these are interesting mike the, the i always like seeing world-class players how they approach these spots you, you see some different schools of thought i mean obviously being massive chip leader uh, or, or chip leader i should say it helps to to go ahead and, and peel but it's some you know multi-way there it's, it is tricky i think king four suited a lot of hand to even consider folding but you know it is a spot where you're going to be dominated a lot and you have to be comfortable to make some folds and play post flop as you can definitely be dominated when you hit top pair just as we see that would be the case here but of course you could hit two pair trips flushes and a variety of other things although as it stands, Ace-5 actually in the lead right now. AM then, considering his options with two overs and backdoor club draw, is going to bet. And Pavel, who, you know, I think this is a board where he definitely could have more threes, right, than the other players. But I think he's thinking that AM then's just a little crazy and he's not really r willing to get too, too out of line here. And our friend from Austria here, Gurgly, is thinking, I do beat the Broadway draws. I do have backdoor wheel draw. I do have backdoor nut flush draw and he is considering to play and he is going to go for the check raise pretty interesting spot here a little bit brave too man am then definitely a guy that could get, get could peel one off could float yeah i mean i think an am then spot maybe a bigger bet is going to be uh like repping hands like pairs that want protection um and repping that part of his range rather than like taking the standard third pot here. Wow. I think it, it, it might be, unless you're willing to do this, I guess if you're willing to like click it back, <laughs> then third pot could be, could be a good sizing. I don't know though. Like he's not really repping that much. <laughs> like if he, if he did that against Pavel or like any of like the really top tier players, I feel like they would be capable of understanding that, I mean, what is he repping? Ace three and eights full, like nines, maybe? No, like he just doesn't have enough hands in his range. But it worked, right? This is just naked aggression at, at final tables, and it works. Yeah, that's a pretty crazy. That was, that was a pretty. I mean, this guy, this guy, he is he is playing to win. He is absolutely playing to win, and that is. Uh, that is i mean that is impressive this this guy is this guy is really going for it
Pablo folded ace nine here. I think it's I think it's a good fold, but semi notable. Like he's gonna have. I actually find these spots, I kind of geek out on these types of spots. Um, Cause you know, I, I came up playing 180 mans and like learning shove fold ranges, you know, on stars like back in the day. And, um, and even as I transitioned into MTTs and got better at understanding how big field ranges change and um, getting better at ICM heavy situations, with big pay jumps compared to the buy-ins, it's been really interesting to uh, go through like sims and learn like what you can actually call with and what you can shove with and the difference between those two things. And they are not the same. Chip EV and ICM EV are completely different. So I love seeing how really studied players approach these spots and find folds with certain hands. This is this is like really interesting to me, like that he finds this shove because you, you don't really see this at mid stakes, but you see it a lot at high stakes because the high stakes players, if you like, if you're in the small blind and Alex is spot there with King Jack and you raise, let's say three X, three and a half X, it gives your opponent the opportunity to shove on you. Gives your, your opponent the opportunity to flat and play in position against you. And at higher stakes, they understand that, you know, playing a pot in position is worth so much or shoving and getting the fold from somebody that has a weak range uh, is worth so much, but at mid stakes, uh, you don't really have to do that. Cause maybe people aren't defending the big blind as much. They're not finding the shoves that they should find, but at high stakes, you find that people are willing to just rip in like 30 bigs, sometimes more. Yeah. yeah and Pavel who has a very playable hand here, definitely has options. King nine suit is going to take the three bet. He did three bet ace Jack off before when smart had King Jack of hearts, King Jack of hearts, even maybe a little more appetizing than the ace 10 off to play. And this is going to be curious. And this is one of those annoying ones where you're like, man, I feel like something's up here, but do He's I really want to step out of way? And it's either they say open light, three bet tight or open tight, three bet light. And now he's he four betting for sure back. Pushing back here. I think ace, ace 10 off and ace Jack off are like superb King queen off. These are like really great four betting hands here. I'm not surprised at all that he took the spot. Yeah. And the three I mean, bit. Th yeah, go ahead. Go. You got it. Uh, the king nine suited is like, I'd say pretty normal three bet. Yep. Uh, from that position and the one and the and one position to his left, even from the the cutoff as well. Like it's a pretty nice hand to three bet with. When you get four bet, you can fold. When you get called, they never have ace king, so like you're not reverse dominated or you're not 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 dominated directly when you flop a straight. I think that's important. Um, but yeah, I, I think that was a great recognition of the spot for smart money. And Pablo, I mean, this is interesting that Pablo opens on the, the big blind of Pablo with the Jack eight off. I mean, just kind of realizing everyone else is going to be so tight that he's just sort of like, all right, you know, there's extra money in the middle. I might have the best hand. It's a random hand in the big blind. And now, uh, Pablo, is he going to get a chance to get to a river here as he checks? And let's see if Pavel gives up or if he decides to put this in. I mean, it's interesting that. I mean, this is this is curious. He's definitely going to honestly, Pablo. Pablo has a just a six, and let's see if he is going to. I mean, this is asking a lot to make this call, but I mean, man, he loses to so many hands. What do you think? You think he's going to call here? I think he's capable of calling for sure. <laughs> because, like, he's not going thin value for, with an ace. Um, I'm not saying that he's going to call. I mean, it's obviously insanely hard to make the call there. I Yeah, I guess, like, he can have any club, basically, and just shove for value there because it's such a, it's such a low risk for him, you know, for Pavel. He can just go for thin value with any club. Uh, but... It's still tough. There, there's a lot of uh, like, there's a lot of what's the word like meta game on him opening uh, from the big or mid position with Jack eight into the short stack. Yeah, I'll, we'll we'll sweat this run out real quick. Look at this. Well, Ace five is gonna take sweat. a absolute 
Miracle to stay alive. Going to need an eight on the river. And Ace comes, makes the full house. Already was home. Pablo Silva will be your eighth place finisher. And that is, again, the only two GG Million champions are now out ninth and eighth. That means we will have a new GG Million champion. Pavel in position with 5.3. Although, and then now your chip leader, three players, four players super healthy. And then we got three fairly short. That is how it is breaking out at the moment. And we are seeing some... Some Mike fans in the chat saying, what's up? We see uh, Joseph Driscoll saying hello and some other familiar faces today. Jason Parker as others. Please say and let us know where you're watching from. Great to have you guys. We are going to play to a winner today. And this is a big, big final table with almost half a million up top. Appreciate everyone hitting the thumbs up. That will be part of the giveaway later today when we do go ahead and, and put that will be the first part of what you need to do to enter. And we are going to, again... We're going to see what's going on. We're going to have a new champion. I'm just verifying that. But season one, no one at this final table won. Season two, we had two-time winner Adamar and two-time winner Pablo Silva. And in season 2023 here, Adamar has won as well with four final tables. Pablo had six. And Pavel has six final tables in this season already. So, again, very experienced player. You can take a look at their GG winnings. I mean, Pavel... Over six million, nine million for Vlad, actually one of the more experienced players. And then Ademar and Pablo around 10 million each. As smart money is going to take that hand, ace nine off. Makes a light three bet there. Yeah, go, uh, what's up, Driscoll? Uh, I study with him. So one of the uh, one of the things I wanted to mention was like opening into that short stack. I don't think you would see that at early and mid stages of a tournament um, with the jack eight. It's just an unnecessary spot to take. And at a final table, I think you're going to find that because there's no fold equity for the big blind, that when you open into his big there, he's going to defend with a lot of hands and you're going to be able to realize the equity of your hand. Um, you're going to be able to over-realize it because you can turn it into a bluff like he did and get him to fold the best hand. And the big blind's not going to just shove and take his 20, 30, 40, 50% equity preflop he's going to try to take it post-flop more frequently. So it's like you're over-realizing your EV in that spot. So I think it's like really good rec recognition by Pavel and understanding that the other players are not going to... Like all of the players behind him, when he opens into that short stack, all of their ranges are going to be honest because they're going to show down so frequently, you know? And they don't want to three-bet open themselves up to a four-bet once the big blind folds. So if they three-bet Pavel in that spot with the jack-eight, It'll probably work because he has a wide range, but he can just definitely just like four bet light, you know, or four bet shove light. And when the big line folds, they have two short stacks. They got to worry about busting before them. So. Yeah, it's well said. And here we go. King 10, the taxi shot to Houston, Texas, the taxi cab is known as King 10 off. And Ace I heard that. Suited one of those ones that is just, Kind of uh, exciting hand to play. Could have played it aggressively. I mean, he still has the best hand here. But again, this is part of the issue. You're out of position, and you are going to get a lot of pressure put on you. Yeah, I know. I got I got big shoes to fill. You've had some very, very talented and uh, very knowledgeable poker players and accomplished poker players on this uh, show. So I'm not trying to uh, to compete with them, but I'll do my best to provide some insights. Uh, with you know high level yeah, competition here. this is this is high quality i mean these, these guys are tough and here we go delayed c bet the king 10 off gonna take it down there a well played hand from smart making us a very smart play as he has got five mil as well and we are gonna get to see see the short stack here in the big blind and pavel with the suited king in his stack and no one really showing a lot of resistance also the button here Easy. with an A7 off. This is one of the reasons why it's the King Four suited. Kind of get to open. You know, you're just gonna have players uh, that that are kind of handcuffed that don't want to tangle with you. So again, showing us how to use the big stack, and he is up to 5.5 million right now. I I've looked at some sims uh, in HRC uh, in spots like that, and I think I heard this from Ben CB as well. Uh, I don't know if it was from Ben or not, but basically in that spot, the King four suited opens a seven definitely finds a three bet sometimes. And it's really crazy how wide, if, if you know that he's getting a little bit out of line with the three bets, 
how wide you can just put the pressure back on him and shove with the fact that there's like three other people that are shorter than him or two other people at this point. Um, and I, I think it's just nobody's really played back except for that first hand. AM then did it at the King Deuce, but we haven't seen. Okay, so we saw the four bet with uh, Smart Money four bet the Ace Ten, which I think was a really great recognition of the situation. Uh, now we're seeing the King Jack. Yeah, I think we're we're just nine handed. We might not see as much, but short handed, you're going to see people are going to open it up. It's just going to happen. Uh, they, he's not going to just have no resistance for the full final table. Uh, but it, it's going to be curious to see the spots that they pick and the hands that they pick. I like this three bet. Uh, it's just, you know, unfortunate that he runs into the nuts, you know? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, I mean, that, that's tough timing. He's got a great hand to do it. It would have worked, and he just got a, a wake up there in a very nice spot for the Russian player who does pick up with no, no showdown. Gets to get the get the chips, the open and a three bet. So he's up to two point five million and two tens timely. Every pot's so important. The blinds are big, and the payouts, pay jumps are massive. So every pot's super important here. Two tens, four eight off. Pavel not gonna take appeal there. As we will again play to a winner, we are down to seven handed. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Let us know where you're watching from. I'm in Florida. I've been doing a bit of traveling. I was just at the Michigan game, national championship in Houston. Awesome. That was that was fun. That was awesome to see. First time in a long time they took that down. So got to enjoy that and took a little uh, relaxation for New Year's. So you uh, you get to you said you don't take much time off. Did you take a holiday time off, or are you still playing a lot? Uh, mainly, I. I played a, sort, a short session, I think, the day before Christmas. Um, and then, you know, I visited family and stuff, too. So, uh, you know, I, I tried to balance it a little bit. It wasn't like full playing. So, yeah, I'll take like the full week off and just play Sunday or play a half Sunday. Like, I just try to get at least some reps in, you know, and give myself yeah. an opportunity to, you know, final table and a 109 for, you know, 50K or something. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's good. It, it, it's good. This is actually getting wild for Smart. He is going to get – okay, this time just just flat. We saw the ace-jack off three bet. This time, you know, I think Pavel realizing this Smart's kind of getting annoyed and this hand has a lot of value. It would be, be not nice to three bet, get four bet off of it. So he does just flat and actually has his player in pretty bad shape here. This is a sign of, like, really, really good awareness from Pavel. Like, I'm really impressed with his play so far, of his awareness of everything. When you play – I oscillate depending on where we are in the tournament between uh, like really tight and really loose. And it depends on what my table allows me to do, what stage of the tournament we're at, how many chips I have. Uh, and I try to be able to do all things. And you notice like when somebody plays really hyper aggressive and they don't slow down, uh, it's fairly easy to adjust to that strategy and exploit them but when they have the recognition of their table image like he has here and now he granted he has ace jack suited and he doesn't want to get four bet off of this hand so it's like kind of an obvious combo that he should be flatting and like taking a flop with also he can call a shove from behind possibly and he's going to have traps he's just aware that if he three bets here he could get four bet again and he is not going to be happy about yeah having to flat the four bet so and i know you were you were mentioning that but i think it's just like superb awareness so you're you picking him and having him uh for your pick for winning this i think is really good but i got a good shot here i got a good shot yeah and, and here jack 10 suited gonna 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 show how the power first in is gets ace three suited to fold the shortest stack in the tournament what do you think there i mean pretty close right to, to it's always important you want to go on your own terms you got 10 plus blinds you know you are the shortest there what do you think about the ace three suited fold i mean pretty close right this is uh you're gonna have the best hand a lot of the time but it's gonna be gonna be a situation like that against the jack 10 king queen whatever two random cards and you're never really dominating so that that's sort of a icm a very tough spot, especially when you're the shortest stack, though. I think then you started kind of got to looking at going a little wider. 
Run, run me through the spot. I was busy talking. Just now, blind on blind, last hand, Jack, 10 suited, shoved in the uh, small blind, and the big blind, who was the shortest uh, Ukrainian flag there, folded ace three of hearts, and he had Jack, 10 of club, shoved. I'm, I'm curious about that spot. Um, in a quicker structure, I would definitely call. Uh, you don't have to call with the offsuit hand, but I think the suited ace is fine calls there. But I think like something you have to really consider in tournaments in general is stack utility and what options you have with stack with certain stack sizes. And so when he passes on that calling off there, it's because he believes that he has a, he'll have other opportunities that will be higher EV for him uh, to open jam or to jam yeah. over and open, which is really important. Now, if you saw that he only had nine big blinds there, he probably would have called. But the fact that he still has some opportunities to jam over Pavel's opens or Alex's opens, um, that's probably why he passed on that spot because he believes there's uh, going to be more profitable uh, spots to put his chips in, you know, that are higher EV. So that that's why he passed on the spot. Yeah, well, AM then had a pretty big chance to to really get a miracle card here. Would have been a nine, would have been a dagger. Although the spades come out, nines does have a spade. King 10 maybe wants to start bluffing here. Could get some low pairs to fold, some other ace X to fold. Uh, let's see, though. He doesn't have a spade in his hand. Let's see if he's going to attack here or not. And he is choosing violence. And this is really a tough spot. He put nines in a, a really difficult position. I think nines peels like he checked back this flop. He didn't check back this flop to just fold here. And I don't think half pot gets it done, but I, I suspect if he chose this sizing on the turn that he's going to be betting the river a pretty high frequency. He's kind of, he kind of chose that on the turn by, by not just leading, but leading a size where, he, wow. I'm surprised he gave up. Like if I feel like if he was going to give up on the river, he should have just chosen a bigger sizing on the turn and get more folds, but he only went half pot and he's giving him a good price with like a bunch of hands that check back. There's going to be like ACE 10. There's going to be hands that can't call a river bet, but like have to call a turn bet. I don't, I don't know if I, if I agree with that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, uh, interesting. I mean, based on how he's played, they're also probably aware of his table perception, how they perceive him, how his, how his image is, and maybe just decided he's going to have it next time. He's been a little out of line today. As we're going to do a mystery hand, Mike, you get to take us through it. Two nines, talk talk to me. Open for sure. Let's see if he goes min raise or what he does, and then we'll, there you go, min raise off 20 bigs, two nines. See who is going to tango with him and what decision we're going to have. This is a tricky hand to play, right? Big money. It's an intense. You can just feel the pressure, the cooker. It's a, it's big. It says 500,000 us dollars up top. And right now they're guaranteed a hundred just in the six figure club, but there's a lot of meat between first and seventh as Alex Garcia is going to have a decision. In the big line, see what he does. 520,000. He's, you think he's going to, yeah, maybe. Okay. Just call. Oh, well this one, okay. <laughs> this one a little, I mean, so, so what are you doing? Do you ever check back here? Are you going small? I mean, it's such a dreamy flop, although there is the diamonds and seven, eight possible. So a lot, it's a little bit wet of a board. If there is a hand to check back, I feel like mixing this in with your ACE highs is pretty good. King highs and ACE highs is pretty good, but, uh, Considering the way the stacks line up here, I probably would just see bet small uh, and just pretty much have a really wide C betting range here. Although it is a final table situation. I, I, the reason that I like C betting here is because the stacks, because Alex has so many chips and has so many straight draws and flush draws. Uh, that he's going to continue here, especially against a small sizing. So I like it. If the stacks were a little bit different, I might just check it back. Uh, but because the big blind has enough chips to speculate or to put pressure on me, uh, I feel like going with an inducing size is pretty good. All right. So we're wow. going to have some tough spots here coming up. We don't. 
we don't know what Alex has, but we know if we're gurgly, we are saying that we do not want a five of diamonds or a 10 of diamonds. Those are probably the two, those are the two worst cards because uh, everything draw wise gets there. Of course, he still is beating six X. He's beating, you know, there's other straight draws, seven, 10. There's, there's other stuff, but this is not a fun card, Mike. And if you're a girl, you just can't believe what fell. And now you have a little bit of decision. You want to kind of keep the lead in the hand. You check back, maybe, maybe let your opponent. Okay. So you do check back and now there's a four card straight four X somehow. I mean, not as worried about, but you lose to flushes and you lose to straights. This thing, this, 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 this is this brutal. turned out a little bit dicey <laughs> for Gurgle. Let's see if he's going to get put to the test here. He's not going small here either because Gurgly is capped, right? Unless you check back the nut flush, which is unlikely. Um, he doesn't have any flushes. Alex has all the flushes. He has pretty much all the straights. Um, this is just a, a really, really, really annoying run out. Uh, if we wanted to get into like what bluffs he has, I mean, I guess he could turn like a bottom paratype hand into a bluff with a dime. Uh, I don't know, man. Wow. So he's got the straight and he bet two thirds, six. right? Yeah, he got, he hit it. He hit the turn. He got, he, or I'm sorry, hit the river, made the gut shot there. Pretty brutal run out. Gurgly does go ahead and call as he is going to see the bad news. And that is officially 5 million again for Alex as a, there's a, there's a lot of chips, four players with a lot, three players kind of shorter. And we are going to see in a, we're going to see who's going to come out on top here as that was a tough blow there for the Austrian player. Nice, nice pickup. And I mean, you could argue about that turn bet. You're supposed to bet or not. I mean, I, I see why you don't, right? That is literally the worst card in the deck, but I mean. I think if you bet the turn, you have to bet call, and that's why he didn't want to do it. And you can't – I don't really think you can go – I guess you could go small at a final table. I think – but still, if you bet there, you you force his, like, uh, combo draws and stuff to, like, check jam on you if you don't give them a good price. Well, I'll tell you what. This is unfortunate here as he folded ace three suited versus jack ten suited, and now – Blind on blind, he had the best of it, but calling off here, he's first in, but now he's going to need to hit a miracle as a forward chop. He needs a 10, a four, not quite the 10. He is our seventh place finisher. We will be six handed. Big pay jump there, 30,000 awarded in a good game for our Ukrainian friend. There's still one from Ukraine left as Pavel. Man, he might not even know what to do with this hand. He's been opening all kinds of hands. This is tier one, ace king suited, so pretty. No one has anything to play with, but. Pavel going to use that chess clock a little before the open. You can see that time. Every player starts with 15 minutes. And I do feel it promotes faster play. I just feel like people then don't waste time. There's not as much, you know, just kind of sometimes you have longer decisions. And I, I do really a fan of the chess clock. What do you, what do you think of that, Mike? I love the, the clocks at the final tables. Um, you know, on other sites, <laughs> don't have to mention which sites. We have no time banks. And it makes... It makes life a lot more difficult, especially in um, final table situations or final two tables where you have like some really intricate spots that you need to think about. Uh, but, you know, starting the final table off with like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, especially for a high stakes tournament where like it, you're really playing against high level competition for a lot of money, you need to think. And sometimes you need that time bank. And the people that, the people that use it up, you know, they probably need to use those, use those minutes. So like, I, you know, I don't, I don't hardly ever go through my entire time bank, uh, when I have 15 minutes, but some people need it in really big spots. Yeah. I do feel just in general that the stuff goes quicker. I feel like people are playing faster and, and making, you know, it just seems to a lot of time I see people don't even use the clock throughout and also similar live. I feel like when there is the clock, it gets brought in the shot clock at the live tournaments that people just play quicker in general. It just seems like that it overall speeds up a lot. You know, what's funny stuff. when I get a shot clock live, I use it more like, um, when I have 30 seconds, I will take the 30 seconds more frequently than I would otherwise, Interesting. but I'm yeah, aware, I mean, I'm more aware of like how much time I have. Yeah. You know? 
Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, that it can go, it can go both ways on that. And I think that overall, it's just, again, similar to the big blind, Annie, one of those really nice things that have happened in poker made things quicker, faster, and, and better. Yeah. I, the first time I had a um, nice, good mute, good mute. Um, the, the first time I played with a shot clock at the Venetian, I, it, it threw me off so much. Like, I feel like I, I didn't even make good decisions. It took me a couple of tournaments where we had the shot clock and I could like, I felt stressed out immediately when there was a shot clock. And as soon as I got used to it, I, I realized that like everybody else feels this way. And yeah. I got used to, okay, if I, I don't have to throw my time bank chip in, like I don't need to really worry about anything, just think through the spot. And once I calm down, I think I actually end up with with a bigger edge um because i have so much experience i immediately know what to do in most spots uh but sometimes i like to just take my time and think through it and maybe get a, a live read in in tournaments live tournament situations um that will skew me you know one way or the other yeah yeah it makes no it makes perfect sense i do want to ask you about brazilian poker do you have some ties to brazil yourself yeah. Um, so in 2015, I hit uh, number one on on pocket fives, and that was like a godsend of a year where I just won everything, like every major on every site. Just couldn't lose. Was meditating before my sessions. Was you know taking care of myself. Like I was I was broken up with my girlfriend at the time, so I was like fully <laughs> inwardly focused, um, and you know. Early in the year, this was just, I won the whale on 888 and I'd won a couple of things on stars and I had been grinding with the, the nerd guy for a long time. Um, and I hit him up and, and was just chatting with him and just being friendly. And he's like, you should come down to Brazil. So I was like, okay. So I went down to Brazil and stayed with him for, uh, like a week and a half or two weeks and just kind of got the lay of the land out there we went and played the bsop uh the main event so i got to i got to experience like the high end of the brazilian poker community um but also i felt i've never felt more brotherly love than than the brazilians gave um nice to see this was not not too interesting of a pot um yeah the i, I love the brazilian poker community um big big fan i remember leaving there going like, man, I have to come back here. Like this yeah, place it's a great is... place. Yeah. I mean, look, I, I'm biased. I got, you know, my wife's Brazilian, but I, I do feel Brazil in general, they're just very friendly, energetic, and they, they, they carry that passion in poker as well. That seems to be across the board. Uh, a lot of love for Brazil. And what about Ann Arbor? Do you have any ties to Ann Arbor? I think you mentioned something like that. Yeah. Um, my girlfriend's parents live there. So we go okay. there twice a year. So nice. I'm driving, I, you know, and actually during COVID, we moved to Ann Arbor for like six months. Like the beginning oh, wow. of COVID, we we're like, we're out of here. And we just left. Yeah. Uh, and we went to Ann Arbor and like the summer in Ann Arbor was so beautiful. It was so amazing. There's like so much wildlife, so much yeah. greener, so much like greenery and like, um, yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful, beautiful place. Uh, but I drive past that Michigan Stadium driven past it many times. I, I used to go on runs and just run past it all the time. So I'm, I'm very familiar with that area. Very uh, cool. So yeah, we visit her parents uh, twice a year down there, like for the holidays and, and in the summer sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I grew up there. I spent a lot of time. And of course, Michigan just won the national championship. That was yeah, fun. That congrats. was a very cool experience. Yeah. No, it's nice. You know I mean? It's good for the town, the energy. It's obviously, it's great. It really does uh, people and the lions first time since the nineties with the playoff win too. So Michigan's having a, having a little bit of a, uh, a miracle sports situation here. And let's see if Gurgley is going to take advantage of this here as it is a tough spot. And he and the other player here are the two shorts. So he just calls and he is going to get massively out flop. Definitely a spot where he could have, you could argue to rip it. You could argue to call. I don't think folding was an option. He is going to get some bad news here. I understand the checked over to. Yeah, the, the hesitation to jam in this spot because they don't have a lot of BVB history because all the pots have been opened up to this point, right? So when Anvar comes in with like a raise first in from the small there, he doesn't have 
unless he has previous history with him in these spots, he doesn't have a read. And so like, if obviously if Pavel raised in the small blind against his big blind here with the King Jack, he's like happy to put the money in here, blind versus blind. He's like, he's just like not ready to do it. Now, if he was suited, I don't know if that would change things. I don't know if he's jamming suited and calling with offsuit or if he's just yep. calling no matter what, but uh, it's, it's really interesting. And I think it's, it's, finding the raise with the queen five is also very interesting from the small blind there because they only had like 21 effective to start that hand. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Interesting. And how do you, how do you, um, how do you approach when you were, if you were watching this, we saw that one spot already ace three hearts on the big blind where the Jack 10 suited shoved in the small and it was, you know, two short stacks and the call off or not. What, what type of things are you looking for when you're watching? If you're, if you're an audience member at home and you're watching this right now, like other than it's fun, it's big money. It's, it's, it's awesome to watch. How are you taking away from this final table? What type of things are you looking at? If you want to review or study or learn from how, how do you do that when you're watching these type of final tables? Dude, that is such a good question. Wow. That's such a good question. <laughs> like, I think everybody should be thinking about this. this is not just entertainment. Like you can take really high level stuff away from these things. Like the hands that people choose to four bet fold with the hands that people choose to three bet fold with the hands that they call with watching Pavel um, maneuver and being aware of his table image. Like these are things that I I'm like acutely aware of because I do it too. Right. So when I see that Pavel, understands like to flat the ace jack suited um i think about what hands he flats and why he chooses to flat limb so asking yourself why in a lot of situations especially when you're doing solver work or reviewing a final table like or looking at a final table like this even if the players are better than you like look at this spot like he he open limps king 10 why why is king 10 like an open limp because i mean I can answer the question, but like, this is something that you guys maybe should ask yourselves. I think King 10 ends up being a good limp because he doesn't want it, right? Like he doesn't want to shove. He doesn't want to fold it because it's too high up in his like button range. And he doesn't want to raise call it or raise fold it because he's going to get played back at or be in a tough spot from the blinds. So he chooses to limp because the hands that the blinds complete with when he limps King 10, when they just complete and check in the big blind, he's dominating all of their hands because they will raise better hands than the king 10, and they will check all the hands that he dominates. So when he limps and they check, he's crushing their ranges. When they raise from the blinds, he now has an opportunity, if he thinks they're out of line, to like limp shove, right? He can limp call or he can limp fold. But it gives him an opportunity to V-pip at a higher frequency on a shallow stack. And... As you get deep in tournaments, you have to learn how to maneuver in these spots, like sub 20 big blinds. And sometimes you have to have limps in your range. And it's not a very intuitive thing to do, uh, or, or the spots are kind of hard to find. And I don't even know how to study them. But, um, I mean, you can look them up in GTO Wizard, I suppose. But I don't study limp ranges that much. I've just learned how to do it because I've been, I've played so many iterations of like low and mid stakes final tables that I've learned how to play more hands. And I've learned when somebody is raising, uh, like when he limps there and the small blind raises to that sizing, you got to kind of figure out, is this guy like full of it? Or does he actually have a hand here at a high frequency? Yeah. And then you have to adjust on the fly. And so there's a lot of adjusting on the fly. Anyway, I hope that, that, yeah, no, exactly. And also in heads up, I think we've seen a big difference now and too, a lot of limping different stack sizes. That's just kind of yeah. the same, same principle. You don't want to min, yeah. min raise get blown off. You also then have some traps. So I think that's also important. And of course it's so rare you get like such a premium in this spot, but I think Gurgley's going to have some, he will, he will limp also off that stack size with aces and some Kings and have to have some traps, which is important as both players pair the 10 here on the turn and Again, range is a little bit wider. Button versus the big blind, Jack 10, King 10. And Alex is going to be a little bit a little bit wary of the check back or of the, of the of the situation. Actually, I missed the action on the flop here, making some notes. There are some very interesting hands today. And King was 10 probably... feels pretty good in this spot as played. But, of course, we're wary of the ace. And he's going to go for a big bet here. Interesting. 
Did it go check that call on the flop? I, I don't. I, I might have been. It might have been a check back. Actually, I, I did. I missed the action. I was no, making there was... a note from the prior hand as we are gonna get a mystery hand here. Ace ten of hearts. Tell tell me what you got here, Mike. What do you like? Uh, I think this hand is easiest to play as a three bet. Uh, but it's uh, it's gonna be in there as a flat. Like if you look this spot up, it's gonna be in there as a flat a lot. Uh, and I think it's totally reasonable to be flatting her. Uh, I would definitely flat at a at a pretty high clip, but I would find some three bets as well, depending on the uh, opponents and their tendencies behind me. Yep. With Pavel behind me, I would feel more inclined to uh, three bet this hand so that I don't open myself up to him squeezing. Well, ace 10 of hearts does flop the nut flush draw on an over, pairs the board on the turn, bringing a backdoor flush draw so now we have a double flush board board and and then who's been for sure pretty spicy has a wide range here i am very curious how this is going to play out let's see definitely has some club combinations he's going to be barreling here goes for a, a big sizing putting a lot of pressure on smart what are you doing here are you calling are you sticking around yeah you can't fold yet the the yeah. uncomfortable part is not calling here it's it's facing a check on the river that's the uncomfortable part yeah, well, also backdoor clubs. You know, there's a variety of hands that just came home. Jack, queen of clubs, jack, ten of clubs, all these type of a set, whatever, ace, any clubs, right? He's going to be yeah. barreling his club combinations here on the flop turn. And now, I mean, ace, ten suited. It's not fun when you have the front door missed flush draw, right? Like, it's it's unlikely your opponent has jack, ten or jack, queen, of, or I'm sorry, jack, queen of hearts or, you know, whatever, some heart missed draw. So now you really don't miss much. I guess seven, eight suited. As well, there it is. The eight ninth club, like I said, the backdoor clubs do come home. So good call. Would have been interesting if that was like a deuce of diamonds, how that plays out, and if he considers more calling there. But as it plays, and then will take commanding chip lead. Shows aggression is rewarded. He gets there and he has got the lead. And now he has got the ability to even go wider. But Pavel waking up again with tier one ace king suited. Such a welcome sight. And these players have some history. Let's see how he will respond to the three bet. And actually, is there a version of just flatting? They're so deep, they're one and two, just in the outside chance that they somehow would get an ace-king suited to queens or or jacks or some kind of big confrontation. But too much hand, Pavel versus this player who's just opening, he knows, going to open super wide. So here we go. I think a big uh, a big factor in determining uh, flatting or three betting here is like the stacks behind you. And that's that's something... Like if you're a viewer, that's something you should be watching all the time is paying attention when somebody takes a spot, look at all the stacks behind them and then think about why they would do it. So uh, when he three bets there, he's committing himself to all these stacks behind him, except for Alex. Um, but he's not going to be facing like a ton of re-steals behind. So there's not a lot of value in him flatting there, I don't think. I think it's better to just isolate and play a pot in position with the top of your range against uh against and then but if you i think if you saw that alex had if they all had 25 bigs behind you might have seen him flat there at a higher frequency so i think that was a big determining factor there i don't think he's worried about like playing a big pot against first and chips or whatever uh he just has the top of his range and his hand it's not like he has because he three bets he has to like bet bet shove you know he can like he's in position he can pot control you know he has control of the hand and in position and that's like i say in uh i have a tournament fundamentals course with brian paris you know brian i'm sure you do yeah yeah um we we created a fundamentals course and one of the the things that we talk about is like you want to play in like there's there's three main things in Nolan hold them play in position be the aggressor and what is the third one? I'm on the spot here. I'm getting all nervous. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I mean, those are those are those are the two, two for sure. Like those are if you do those well, you're going to be in good shape. Throwing a throwing a cherry on top, but yeah, those are those should get you a long way. Let me get the third one. All 
All right, both players missing. Also, so hard to make a pair in Nolan and Hold'em. And so, of course, semi bluffing. A big portion of what you need to be doing is putting pressure on here. We just get a good illustration. Both players with no pair, but the aggression, as you see, does does help. Jack Nine suited does get the slightly better hand to fold both back to flush. Yeah, that's high Jack High. That's it. Being the aggressor. Before I even found it, I don't know. I just blanked on it for a second. But, but that, uh, that was what you said. Be the aggressor, play in position, then the third. Be the aggressor in position. What was the other one? I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of there's a lot of important parts of poker, but those I mean those are two pillars for sure. As we're gonna see, Ace Queen just gonna pick this one up, not messing around, no no inducing, just straight up. Hey, Ace Queen, all in. See what happens. Takes it down. I'm such a goof ass. Not not remember this. It's gonna bother me now. I'll find it. Well, we have got a six-handed battle, 491,000 up top. Again, pretty, pretty impressive prize pool is Jack 839. Let's see the interesting also stack size-wise. Going to go ahead and start pressuring, not limping. Before, they were kind of even. Now, a gap. And again, strategy adjust. So Pavel says, hey, now instead of limping on these type of hands, I'm going to put pressure. And he's at 7 million, tied effectively with A and then Jack Nine suited here for smart money. Bit of a tough spot to open, knowing Pavel's going to be playing pretty aggressive. Let's see if he does still open. How many blinds? 35 blinds. So he does pass. Passes the spot. Just giving Pavel a little bit of respect. What did he have right there? Jack Nine of hearts suited Jack Nine. That's a really... That's a really tight fold, I think. Although... If you look at the way the stacks are here, he has 35 bigs. So he falls into this camp of, uh, like you said, he falls into this camp of having a medium sized stack. So it's easy for Pavel to put pressure on him and he needs to be super aware of, you know, busting before the 10 big blind stack or yeah. even Anvar who has 25 bigs. There's three people that, uh, well, this Ace King's gonna get through, but there's two people that are shorter than him. So that's kind of the way that like final tables play out in general is um, the big stacks want to put pressure on the medium stacks when there's, you know, short stacks still in play. And so you're going to find even at the highest levels of the game, like the, uh, the big stack at the final table is going to find ways to put pressure on the medium stacks because they have the least incentive to go broke, you know, whereas the short stacks, they need to find spots to chip up and to give themselves a chance to win the tournament. Uh, I think the most gangster thing that you will see is when people like, uh, you know, um, uh, Nacho says yep. ICM is for poor people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a great quote. It's a, it is it is uh, it is a great line, and that's not necessarily true, but it is it is a good way of of making a, a bold statement about how to approach that. And here he is. He's just going to get defend queen five suited. Ace eight decides. Hey, there's a lot of hands that I'm beating. He does rip it in, and now has the backdoor club three to one. Three out of four times, Pavel is going to lose, and then he needs a club. That would be so gross. Five going to smash it. And again, the risk premium so low, no one even close to as short as Gurgly was. And he decides to defend and he gets rewarded back up to 2 million. Very important pot as he will pick that up. And Pavel with this first sort of, I guess, misstep, although he had the best hand to start and wasn't much to do after the flop, just kind of circumstances as now aces for Garcia. We really haven't seen aces passed around today maybe once if if any so let's see if uh fives is going to step into it with 20 blinds six-handed cutoff button you know five starts looking a little bit a little bit a little bit strong but at the same time you're you know it's big to risk it all with fives getting a flip or a four to one you get called and you're in bad shape not so fun he's got got enough play and he does pass does pass on it good discipline there that's a tough spot to pass on uh, again, like if Pavel opened or if AM then opened, I think he would take that spot. But because yeah. Alex is opening into AM then, uh, there's a little bit of meta there that like he should have a fairly strong range because yeah. he's he's going to be playing against somebody that's going to defend the blind a lot and could put him in a tough spot. So 
I don't know if Anvar is thinking about that, but like these are the things that you should be thinking about. Like seeing that he folded fives there, if you look it up in chip EV, fives is like a slam dunk shove in chip EV. Like you can shove there all day and print money, right? But in a final table situation, like ICM is real, right? Like thinking about, is it worth, it's not even, it doesn't even have to be ICM. It's just, is it worth it for me to take this spot here or will I find a better spot? And that that's kind of like what ICM is. So he's thinking about uh, if he can find a better spot and he believes that he can. And I think he can as well. But if you think you have no edge at a final table, like if you're against a bunch of sickos, like throw the money in there with the fives for sure. But if you think that you have a skill edge somewhere um, or that somebody else is like a fish and they're going to bust before you, whatever it is, uh, then maybe you can pass, you know, but as an amateur against a bunch of pros, like you should just be jamming and playing big pots. Yeah. I mean, of course it matters to the way you start with chips, as we saw the two most experienced players, at least GG million wise with the three and two titles, both going out ninth and eighth, they were our shortest stacks and they did never quite get it going. Pa Pablo got a little bit of, you know, an opportunity with the King six versus Jack eight ended up getting bluffed in a spot where he was short. Pavel made a nice play with the Jack eight and we got to see some post-while playing here. Pavel in a bit of trouble. The A six, not a lot of backup here as that is a card that will maybe slow things down at least for him, but he is in big trouble. Could chop, right? Certain cards, the deuce. All right, Jeff, I got, I got, I got the third tenant. These are the tenets of Nolan Maholden. Be in position, be heads up, be aggressive. That's it. Be heads up. Okay. And I'm the one that came up with it. I, I was just like, I was writing the fundamentals course and thinking about it. And I was like, what are the keys that we want if you're just starting out and you don't understand no limit hold'em? It doesn't have to be tournaments, doesn't have to be cash games, whatever, all formats. If you're heads up, if you're in position and you're the aggressor, when you check all those off, you're giving yourself the best chance to win. And that's really like distilling it down to the simplest um, tenets, for lack of a better word, of like how, how this game works. And you're going to find that, that like all of these players will check those boxes, all three of those boxes off as often as they possibly can at all stakes. Yeah, and this is going to get, again, Pavel just kind of in a dark spot into a chop does get the runners and now ace king suited again and this time we may see five and we may have a very important pot at this final table as again ace king suited tens these are kind of just one of those things in poker you you play all the other pots the small blind the big blind you know the the the, the different positions the different times you kind of battle to try to put yourself in a position and this is something people will say oh i lost tens to ace king oh i won a flip ace king to ace to tens but there's a reason Pavel has got this player covered. So if Pavel loses this flip, he's still going to be okay with 3.2 million. Now this player who has done a great job to get here, all of a sudden it's going to come down to a flip and it's for his life. So, you know, again, it's of course not always indicative of your stack size and how well you played, but I think that's a theme that the, the players that are world-class that have done the work that, that they just find a way to cover. They find a way to win all these other different times they're picking up pots and then when they have you covered you're the one at risk as we see tens here not loving it but it's six-handed and it's again a spot where you just kind of understand that there's a certain point where it's up to you it's your time to shine and i think here folding would be kind of wild although there is another stack similar and also pavel does have some fold equity i mean we've seen crazier folds but this would be i think a little too too uh too wide although pavel has not been really out of line on on the three bets um, and, and this player's been tight too. So he's probably a little bit worried about this, that he's under the gun getting three bet. So one of the things that I would look at in this spot or pay attention to as a viewer is like, what sizing does he choose here? And, you know, I keep all of my uh, tournaments in, in uh, chips or big blinds. I don't oh, even look at this. Hold that sizes. thought. Ace, king, tens. Ace, king going to pair right away. The ace and the king. Now it is over 100%. Dead. 10 wouldn't even do it. And he doesn't get it. Pavel, it's just kind of one of those things. He's running a muck he has absolutely gone to crush mode with eight plus million 8.3 million and that is a bad news for the other players although am then is right there in contention so you were just saying mike you do put your 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 you when you're playing you put it in big blinds correct so you, it's a little easier for you to understand what's going on and look at yeah it actually causes problems for me in pkos in the early stages because 
the way to figure out uh, calling ranges in the early stages is understanding like what a quarter of the or twenty percent, twenty five percent of the stack is. Uh, but yeah, I keep it all in chips. I'll go back and forth uh, just to check, but I don't want to be making decisions based on oh my god, this feels like I do. Do I want to put ten million chips in here? And it's like it doesn't matter how many big blinds do you have and what's the history and what's the spot and what's the context of the hand. Uh, so it, it becomes more uh, robotic, which is kind of what you aim for in tournaments or in poker in general, is to just take the emotion out. Uh, this is a nice squeeze spot. I think it's, um, yeah. I'm wondering, I mean, Ace Jack suited seems like fairly standard there, but I'm wondering like what he does with some different hands like what his squeeze fold range looks like. But one of the things that I was was saying in that uh, hand with the tens versus ace king is like, look at the sizing he used for his three bet from the small blind. It was less than three X. Why did he do that? Does he do that against the 40 big blind stack? Does he do it against a 20? Like in this spot, it was against a 20 big blind stack or 21 yep. big blinds. And like, he can't have a three bet folding range if he only uses big sizings, right? So he's like trying to feign uh, weakness, trying to feign weakness by having a small sizing, but really he just has the nuts, which is what a lot of people do. Uh, but he probably does have a three bet folding range there. But that's that's kind of like the things that you look for is like what sizings do people use? How do they how do they manipulate stack sizes? Like we we've seen now that Pavel is, I imagine he's one of, if not the best player at this final table. Um, not just because he has the chips, but like his awareness is just really, really top notch. And I learned from somebody that, you know, do you remember uh, Cal four two six eight eight? Of course, of course. Yeah. Um, Cal's been my, my backer f since 2011, you know, I've, I've been his only horse for, for this long and, um, great player, he, great guy. I, I always like Cal. Yeah. He's, uh, he's, he's awesome. He's, he just had that win. He won the win, right? The, what, the, the one K one at the win, the prime one K with 10,000 like? brother, 10,000. It was a live one K Sunday million is what it was like in the, pr in the prime of the Sunday millions, like 10,500 runners. And he ended up, uh, they, they made a deal heads up for a little bit, but he won, you know, 1.3 or whatever oh, it was somewhere. Around there. That's such a sick one to get. I mean, that, that really is like the dream. What a, what a, what a dream to be a legend of the game, be around forever. And then just kind of, those are one of those staple ones. You'll never, never forget as smart guy may never forget this. He just hit the set of sevens. We haven't seen a lot of post flop people making big hands, although tens, you know, two overs, not loving this flop. So may not get be hard for him to get too hurt here but sevens flops gin lightning in a bottle this is big and checks back and now one of those cards that actually is not great to see but also gives alex more hope now he goes from two outs to what 11 outs or yeah what do we got he's got the he's got nine or 10 yeah so he's got he's got a, he's got a shot here he's got a shot to win all of a sudden out of nowhere and you know tens definitely He's going to be a little bit concerned on the bet. He's realizing, though, that he, I don't think so. it's not fun when you're drawing and you don't know if you even want to hit the spade. But he does call, and Sevens has a winner if he can get to a river. The only the only combos that Sevens is worried about here is, like, King, Queen, King, Jack, King, Ten of Spades. Like, Queen, Jack of Spades probably C-bets this board. Jack, Ten of Spades C-bets this board. Nine, Ten of Spades C-bets this board, Right. Yep. So there's not a ton of flush combos I don't think he needs to worry about. So I, I believe that he is just playing his hand for value here. The sick, and, I, and I, you know, I, I just don't see tens like bluffing the river. Uh, I don't think this is a great combo for it. You want to have like a better, at least a better spade in your hand or two block. Like, yeah, I just, I just don't see it. I think he's just going to fold. Yeah. Yeah. Gets out of the way. Because it's, so that's another thing is like, because it's an ace high board, ace king high board. Like, what combos of flushes can he actually have there? You know, if the ace and the king weren't spades or whatever, and spades run out, then like he can have an ace and king high flushes. But, um, I don't know. It's just just something to keep in mind too when thinking about ranges.
Yeah. This is uh this is interesting to see. I mean, Pavel has really had been steady, just kind of never had a lot of adversity. And here, ace queen to ace is such a cooler. Does he find a flat off the stack depth? And uh, at, at this particular thing, it won't matter, I don't think, right? Ace queen, just a lot of hand covering as well. Big hands, five handed here. We're gonna queue a giveaway for you in a bit. It's gonna be fifty or a hundred dollars, and it will be a GG tickets for someone. So let's see. He's just going to come out firing it. And I mean, smart. It's one of those spots too. Smart. You like ace queen off. You just, you don't love it. You are beating hands. I just, you know, it's just, you realize you're going to be flipping. You're going to be behind and he is going to. He's not even considering it. And whip folding. it in. And this yeah. is the nightmare. Like even against ace king, kings, you got life here. You're in bad shape. Needs a lot of help. Says good luck. Pines a queen for a sweat. The four pairs on the turn. Queen or queen only. Five point. 4.55% if he can do it. And, ooh, scary paint, the real sweat, but Gurgly going to take it, and we are still five-handed. Still five-handed. Jeff, what was the emoji? I'm pretty sure he gave him the good game emoji when the flop was a queen. It's a, <laughs> it might it, it might have been... Went for the positivity on him, huh? Yeah, I mean, yeah. That, um, <laughs> yeah, that was... That was, that was, you know, ace queen, bad shape. All of a sudden, flops, flops life there. Wanted probably a straight draw, some kind of gutter or a flush flop possibility, but no, didn't come, didn't have a chance. And now Jack Nine suited in a tough spot in a, in, in debating, does he want to kind of stay active or not? Going to pass. Pavel will certainly be taking that role. And playing. So again, to go back to your question. Um, what do you want to take away as a viewer? Like when you have 20 big blinds in the big there with aces, I don't even think he had 20. He had less than 20. He had like 18 bigs or 19 bigs to start that hand. Like three bet folding isn't really much of a thing there. And so it's, it's hard to have, although we, we have seen because of the Brazilian stables, uh, and the Brazilian poker community. And then like, um, I guess some of the people in like Ukraine and Russia and stuff have, have started to like throw in some of these really small three bets. And the game has actually changed a little bit. So he opened sevens here, got jammed on. Yeah. He raised folded. Okay. That's crazy, right? That's a crazy spot right there. He ripped the ace six because of the ICM pressure. He shoved almost... He shoved like, how many blinds was that? Almost 40 blinds. <laughs> just, just, just going, just YOLO. Absolutely firing. These guys are, I mean, this is, this is, uh, these guys are, I'm telling you, we, we, we knew on the opening hand, the king deuce off three bet, the queen 10 off four bet. These guys right here who you're looking at playing, they were the ones. And yeah. it is, it's exciting. You know, these guys are battling. Ace eight does check back. Jack eight. Suda doesn't have really any equity here. Let's see if he starts taking a stab. Ace eight does have these guys seem to know too. I mean, Pavel just knows bet sizings when he does bluff, when he is in a, a spot where his range, he feels that he has gotten advantage. He does take in here is like in a perfect example. Ace eight off. It's like, all right, I could have the best hand, but it's just like, what am I? I got to call. Hope I'm good. Fade the river if I'm not good. And then call if I got to make a hero call. And he does just take it down. Pavel takes it down. We got eights in a mystery hand. Gurgly opening here surely mike let's see who is going to be playing against who you get to kind of talk us through here looks like alex will something's going to be going last time we saw a very interesting hand where he flopped top set and got a pretty nasty run out and then had to pay off a river bet where he did not win the hand let's see here if it's oh my goodness i mean <laughs> flopping the set's hard winning the hand you're supposed to win on these boards and have a clear just kind of a nice situation let's see if it's a little cleaner for gurgly what do you like here I mean, so if he chooses like a big sizing here, it's because he has like uh, PTSD from the previous hand, but it's generally a small sizing here. Uh, what is that? 200? Yeah. So third pot ish. Fine. That's probably also, exactly a little different. Last time he blocked top, like he had top set. This time he doesn't block the, the ace, right? Player could have also another very wet board, six, seven hearts as well. So this time. Last time there was a very wet board. This time, same thing. This time, middle set versus top set. Let's see if Alex might even just play back here, possibly. Although, generally I don't think on so. these boards, like he's likely not going to play back. 
right? The ace high. He's. He I think it's mostly anything. mostly calling here. Yeah. Yeah. Does click it. So this is music this is to so Gurgley's ears. See if he just calls or if he decides to put the action up. I mean, it's nice when you don't block. I guess you could have ace five. You can have, you know, a lot of aces aren't going to check raise though. So this is actually a, a little bit, like you said, a bizarre, generally going to just call. So let's see. I actually don't mind clicking it here because like a lot of the hands that he's check raising with, he doesn't check raise just his ace. I don't think his top pairs. So he either has ace five, ace eight, um, or he has a draw. So he either has a hand like, so you kind of force his draws. You want to make his draws indifferent here, basically like to calling and shoving. So I actually like the clickback. I don't really, I don't think I would have chosen his sizing. I would have gone a little smaller, but I actually think a clickback there is pretty good because I don't think that he's check raising. Maybe you get four, six to fold four, six with a heart or something, but like the generally his check raises here are going to be hands that have like a decent amount of equity against you or actually willing to stack off because this board generally is is not played as a check raise and, and what do you like sizing wise here i mean you effectively have the nuts right other than uh, splatting aces um pre-flop but yeah you have the nuts so what, what 2.4 a lot of money in the middle important pot to pick up but yeah also 50, you not 50 lose your opponent. 55 percent probably or you you just can't i think shoving is shoving is on the table but i think <sighs> okay so he wants to rep that he has like bet folds here and i don't know man like given my read on the big blinds range here i don't think a small bet is like he's trying to get him to like shove his draws here on the turn or to call with a top pair type hand but the thing is is like he doesn't have like i don't think he has a lot of one pair hands here unless he has like five x of hearts like that that's a reasonable one pair hand that he can have um right i think i i think i would have just charged him more on the turn and even though like it kind of makes it obvious that you have value um i think we're thinking about his range a lot more in this spot this this is the way that i view this spot but yeah. like you know what what does that mean <laughs> these guys are the ones at this final table so yeah well two minutes on the chess clock he's definitely been taking his time with queen 10 hearts basically the only hand you lose to of course you're not really thinking about that and also queen 10 hearts is that gonna is that gonna check raise you on the flop no so like you have in theory the nuts right you're hoping maybe opponent has five king five jack five or yeah ace five but ace five might have already seen the money go in so let's see here he's gonna shove and let's see alex garcia is got the king six of hearts so he did have that flush draw does pair the king and alex hasn't folded yet but i mean really you got to believe your opponent has you beat here right there's there's just not a lot of hands that 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 you're you're beating other than I don't know. Like what the, the click back on the flop just so strong too. Yeah, um as far as combos to check raise here, like I think this is like a somewhat reasonable, but I would expect him to have I mean, I guess having specifically having this the nut flush draw is really important. But I I would expect that he has some type of combo draw at a pretty high frequency there that contains like either the five of hearts, six of hearts, or seven of hearts. Yeah. You know, where he has a straight draw and a flush draw or a pair and a flush draw, and he blocks bottom set. Um, or even like, yeah, that's that's just what I would have expected. Uh, but having the six, I think, is also important. So yeah. maybe, maybe the solver likes um, check raising this combo, but I, I think I'd probably play it as a check call, especially considering like the king could be live also. Like if you if you turn a king, like it could be the best hand, you know, against like nines, tens, jacks, queens. Yeah, crazy, crazy action right now. We got eight point three million chip leader. AM then played great. He has really been aggressive as well. Uh, really impressed with the play so far. I'd say there's been uh, aggressive nature today, which is always fun for the viewers. Always fun to watch. Always fun to see some different styles of play. We've seen a lot of action today. Appreciate everyone coming in, hitting that thumbs up. That will be, we'll cue the giveaway here coming up. Going to be 50 or $100. Got to hit the thumbs up and then type in a keyword, which we'll put. And of course, the Twitter on my pinned tweet, Jeff Gross Poker. I already put the link in earlier, but you can just go to Jeff Gross Poker on Twitter and be in for that. Mike, I hope you hit the retweet out. $50 cash money. You're there, strung out 12 on 
Twitter as well. So we are. Yeah, let me find, let me try to retweet that. I've got to find. A... Just added you on there. And yeah, good luck today. Two giveaways, 50 or 100, and then also 50. So audience always in the action. Appreciate you guys being here. Really does give us some energy and we enjoy you asking great questions, following along. And again, as we talk about trying to learn in the best way possible, a lot of different ways you can approach these final tables. I make a lot of notes myself. There are a lot of interesting hands. The ace three, the jack 10, that blind on blind shove was a pretty interesting spot that I thought got folded a little too fast. And then interestingly enough, busted when he shoved ace 10 off to the same player who then called the big blind with ace king. So instead of calling slightly ahead, got it in behind dominated. But again, there is something to be said about first in, and that's why it's fun. And that's something to really, really look at. And that's why you got it. It's it's the cool thing about learning. I think the biggest, I would say mistake or misunderstanding is it's like in poker, like, oh, well, this hand exact situation will happen. But that's what's fun because you take the situation, you look at the spot, and then you get to see the, the game tree or the, 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 the ranges and you get to then learn like, okay, well, this was this, but what about this? Or what would I do differently here? Oh, this got called with that, but what about you know, how wide does it go? How loose do you shove? How these, these are how you get better quickly. And, and again, memorization is important, but even the best players in the world, they're not memorizing every single spot or every single nuance, but they see it, they get familiar, they see pattern recognition, and then they, you know, they, they approach it. And then when it's time, when you're here, it's for big money. They, they, you have a good idea what to do. You're not lost. You're not like, when, cause even like for me, I'm looking at it and I've seen it all. I've been around 20 years and that, that spot is very close. And there are multiple things to consider. What are the other stacks? How short am I? What's my risk premium? How good are the other players? How do I feel I match up in the table? What's the future game? So like, there's all, you know, it's like a beautiful mind. You just got these different things you're thinking about. And at home, you know, you, you oh, here we go. King do suited, king queen suited. Pavel behind 10 would lock it up. Let's see eight, four extra outs. I mean, deuce is really two outs for the two, one to come. And it is a, oh, 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 oh no. Diamond. You never know when you need the diamond, the scare. What a, oh, fool. wow. He made that the, is flush. the right okay. emoji, the few, cause that was, uh, that was definitely close. But that, honestly, no sweat off Pavel's back, but this one, a little more expensive. We got Kings to eight. Yeah. And that is going to be this. The queen 10 is what, what really did it right here. The queen 10 didn't open. Yeah. It could, could have played out completely different. Although he probably still runs eights. Uh, but that, now he definitely shoves eights. Yeah. This is a fist pump shove. I mean, with the two short stacks there oh, yeah. and the guys that only has to risk effectively those stacks and Kings. I mean, can't believe it. He gets the good news, not even the ace X over. So a little bit of a bigger favorite 20 to 80%, but Pavel dangerous, never count him out. Can he ping one safe to the river two outs again, last time he, he hit one at two of one of three outs, but it wasn't the right one of the deuces. And he's going to get a clean one and just things change quickly. Smart, smart guy is feeling pretty, pretty good right now. He is officially, I'm sorry, smart one. Smart one is got, and he's getting some hands, man. He's on a little bit of a heater here, Mike. Getting a little, little rush. Gets the double, the double, and now ace king. Who had smart money? You? I think you did, right? Yeah, I believe I believe so. I had Pavel. Smart money. You had Alex Garcia. You have. I have Gurgly. I got three. AM then and Alex. So three, three to two. I think I'm. I outchip you by a little bit, by a couple million. Okay. That sounds right. Sounds right. We're we're it's a fair fight though. Audience got a good sweat, fifty or hundred dollars. Yeah, that's uh, you know, I've watched a, a couple of these final tables and and to watch these like to watch the high stakes guys that play like the twenty five Ks on here and like um you know, play high rollers and stuff, to watch them navigate shallow stacks. And come into this final table as like, you know, with 14 big blinds and somehow they're in with three people left. And you're like, what the hell, man? Like, how do they find ways to do this? Like, this is something to pay attention to. Like, where are they putting their chips in? Where are they not putting their chips in? Right? Like calling, not calling off for Vlad with the ace three. Is that normal? You know, is that abnormal? Um, what does our range look like in that spot? You know, to go back to something that you said earlier about like, like learning from these spots, this is, this is kind of interesting, but I think his three bet sizing is big enough to where the ace deuce is not too incentivized to peel 
but normally suited aces are going to be, I think, peeling a decent amount in those spots. Um, when you're like studying or looking at solvers and stuff, like you can get an answer from the solver about a spot and maybe it's in chip EV, maybe it's in ICM EV. It doesn't really matter. It's not right. <laughs> Like, because the reason it's not right is because there's humans involved. Yeah. And in every final table and every spot that you actually go into and study, you need to have the experience of somebody that can tell you what's more realistic of a range. And this is why, like, I still get coaching. I do coaching for people that are, you know, around my skill level or lower. Um, but I also get coaching from people that are better than me. You know, I, I still learn from Cal and... Um, he doesn't even study solvers, but he's, you know, he's, he's more on the like feel side of things, I guess, like kind of old school. Uh, but I think it's really important to understand like that even if you go hard on studying the solvers, it's really just giving you a baseline of what you would do with no information approximately, but then you have to factor in everything, right? What stakes does this player usually play? Is he way out of his buy-in range? Like, I still make final tables, $20 final table where we're playing for 10K up top. And I don't care about the 10K. I want to yeah. get first. And I'm playing and I look a guy up and his ABI is $6. And, and you just think about how many buy-ins that is for somebody that plays a $6 and how can I exploit them, right? Like that's, that's the way that I think about these spots. Yeah. So uh, that's the human element of this thing. So I think it's, it's important to understand that. Like you can't, it's not a one size fits all for all these spots. And that actually goes back to, you know, talking about the nerd guy, Yuri Dizielewski, like the funnest last name you could ever say. <laughs> um, he, he's probably not only the nicest, most like, loving kind person that i've ever been around like i try to have him in my life in some way as much as i can without being annoying um i mean he's just like i, I don't know anybody else like him he's good at everything he does and he works harder than anyone i've ever come across in poker and i've been in the game for a long time you've actually been in the game longer than me um but and i've known a lot of top tier players and I can tell you, like, there's still, even at, even at the highest levels, there's a lot of lazy guys don't want to put in the work, especially once you've won a ton of money, you don't feel as incentivized, uh, you know, to work like Jay Kuhn does. And Yuri, no matter what he's studying, so, like, 2015, he was, like, helping Poker Snowy, I think, like, develop their program. He was learning mixed games. Now I've watched him like become, you know, one of the best mixed game players in the world. You know, he pays coaches for any of the games. Like he just wants to learn from someone that's better than him. And he studies and studies and studies. He learns PLO. He studied and played cash games in PLO for like years when he lived in Australia. Um, and he's just the hardest working guy that I've ever seen. And it's just like the clearest example of how you get to where you want to go is like you're singularly focused and you dedicate almost all of your time and energy and uh and now he has a family so uh he still works his ass off uh but it's it's going to be interesting to see like how he finds that balance especially with like kid number two comes in yeah uh, picture uh how do you do it how do you do it yeah. with two kids I mean, yeah, I got to hear my little ones running around. I got a nine month old and, and a four year old. It's definitely, like I said, I mean, I'm not playing as much. I love doing the show. I love doing podcasts. I love poker. I love content. People play live some, you know, play uh, when I can. I get to play, but it's it's just, yeah, I'm not playing tournaments as much and traveling, try to travel less. So, yeah, it's hard, man. It changes. Yeah. Things change with kids for sure. It's definitely, you, you see that a lot of, I think 30, 30, 40 year olds, they go through this phase and also you see how there's older. Um, you know, sort of like the Dan Shack or Bill Perk people as you get older and then your kids are out of the house or as they get in high school, college, things are a little different. Maybe you get to play a little more, but there's definitely phases. And, and, and uh, that's also why I say to people out there playing right now, you know, enjoy it, enjoy those Sunday grinds, enjoy those, 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 those streaming, enjoy the, the traveling around the world and 
playing every day at the World Series because, like, you know, that, it does. It's like you just do it, you do it, it's fun, it's great. And then all of a sudden you look around, you're like, okay, well, now I'm not going to be doing that for a while or it's just not an option. So I think it's important to really enjoy it and, you know, capitalize, work hard, take it seriously, do your best. And, and yeah, it's not always going to be where you just get to, I mean, it could be, but it's just unlikely where you're always going to just have the same amount of time. And, and as we're going to see a big moment here again, a Big spot, ace ten suited, king queen, and a massive flop for Pavel, who has got wow, hammer lock, and all of a sudden that just flipped the script. He is gonna need a boat, or oh my goodness, is that a queen? A oh my is a god, what is that? Dude. it is a oh my goodness, GG, seventy percent hits lightning on the turn, literal lightning, and then the runner. Queen though, boats up, king queen. Pavel gonna take us down to four. We will cue that giveaway very soon. And we are going to see Pavel, who's back at eight million. Gurkley all of a sudden with six million, two sixes, and he is going to come opening. And so it's pretty, pretty even here, as though there is three point four million stack for smart money. Not over yet, but has got himself a task to play with in a nine five suited flat, Mike. Well, we've already seen a bunch of flats from Pavel. We haven't discussed it, but he's been flatting the button with suited connectors. And he's really taking into account like what he can get away with um, and how often people will be squeezing to, to his left. I think if you found that the stack sizes were a little different, he might not have those flats. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's really interesting. So six is opened here and nine five suited flatted, right? Pavel was in the big. Well, yeah, AM then AM then flats nine five suit on the button and sixes are gonna get get away here after like, nine. Note the sizing there. Like he went uh a little over half pot. Like right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was it was a fairly big bet and it was a good hand to do it with, semi bluffing. Uh and he can also like improve to the best hand. But he puts so much pressure on the hands that aren't top pair there. Uh, that flatting the way these stacks line up uh, can be very profitable. I mean, I don't know if I would find the 9.5 suited flat. Like, I'd probably be more apt to 3-bet it than to flat it, but that's not always uh, necessary. This is a really Berkeley. tough spot for yeah. sevens. Yeah. I mean, again, risk premium, though. You're the shortest. You got to yeah. start thinking, like, hey, you know, at some point, if I go out now, it's not the end of the world. I'm in fourth currently. I got a nice score lock. He's going to flat and flop. Wow. He's going to peel and get the set of sevens. The sets have been prevalent today. They've been coming and king four off. Definitely a hand where on the 10, seven, four, when you get flatted, you do flop a four here. You are in big trouble drawing basically dead, right? What does he need? He needs a king, king. Yeah. So first of all, I'm, I'm surprised that king four didn't, bet the flop uh i know he has showdown value but it's it this this hand is actually interesting to me because i wonder like what smart money does with fives and fours uh like ace five suited ace four suited fives and fours specifically yeah i think these are like perform well as the four bet shoves in these spots and you find them like in all the solver spots uh not all of them but you know in general and the fact that he flatted sevens and didn't shove it is like really interesting to me. Like if he's really, 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 really well studied and understands that like this doesn't show up against an opponent that's actually finding the king fours, the king four off three bet. And I think the king four, you see this a lot from the big blind. You see this three bet with this king king blocker and the hand's just kind of trashy and he doesn't think that he's going to get flatted too often. So it performs well as a three bet. Uh, but smart money flatting and being confident enough with a very low SPR to go post flop. I think this is like, in a way it's like kind of savage because you know, he's like a, a top level player. Like this is not a fish that's doing this, you know, like, does he flat eights? Does he flat nines? Like he probably shoves nines. It's just interesting to me that he didn't just go for it in the spot. Yeah. And, and now uh, he, has got 2.8 million stack pot ratio less than two was he get called by does he get hero does he have the best hand i mean six x unlikely in there although the king four off is a three bet and there is a club he has a king of clubs so let's see what he does not sure so maybe does that mean he's checking 
Is he going to check back or is he going to just rip it here? I think his the problem with this spot is like. What do you get called by? Yeah, I don't think he gets called by a lot of one pair hands. I think the check is too tight. I think he needs a value bet here. I just, you know, I'm so used to going exploitative sizings and like choosing a not all in sizing there where maybe I'm not balanced, you know, um, because I, I don't think my opponents uh, at the stakes that I play are going to be exploiting me and finding like the river check shoves, especially at final tables. Um, I think it's a little bit too tight to be checking there. But, uh, you know, I get it. I get it. Yeah, man, I'm, I, I'm surprised. Like, I am actually disagreeing with some of these plays, and I feel kind of strongly about it. But I could be way off, you know. Right. Like, again, I'm not. I'm not the one at this FT. So, like, and also these guys can have history that that I just don't know and information. Well, about. I always, I always say too, the cards up is tough, right? It's like one of those things where. It's just like when you, you, you kind of see it and you're like, oh, yeah, this is, you know, feels obvious or you feel strongly. And it, it, there's a bias, of course. But again, in, yeah. the, in game, in moment, huge money, life changing stuff, five, half a million up top. I mean, some of these guys, this is, a, this is just a Tuesday for them. Other guys, this is literally their moment, right? It's a, it's a lot of money. You don't know they might satellite in. Looking at some of the results, some of the history of some of these players, they don't have such a pedigree or haven't played this event many times. So it does make you think maybe they did satellite in or taking a shot. So, yeah, it's exciting. And, it's great to see a healthy prize pool and uh, again a mix today of some of the biggest names in the game and then also some up and comers in Pavel. Should he be allowed? I don't know. This guy, I feel like he's he's got to be some kind of handicap on the distribution. He's got an ace king suited a handful of times. He won a flip and now he's got aces and he's going to come out attacking, but not going to be getting uh, getting looked up here as we see almost a hundred people have hit the thumbs up. Appreciate that and we will have a giveaway for you as well. Coming up yeah, here, so I retweeted that soon. Yeah, like I was saying, um, you know, I learned from somebody that's literally, I think, I think on Twitter, he doesn't really use Twitter, but uh, Cal <laughs> says uh, his Twitter bio is, I play the most hands. <laughs> that's, that's his bio. And if anyone's played with him, they know that that's, that's it. I mean, that's a pretty fair description. But I learned from someone that's on that end of the spectrum, and I played 180 mans where I was running a 1310 for my entire career, and then I had to learn how to run a 43, you know, 38, and just play a bunch of different hands. And if you're gonna get good at closing out tournaments, you gotta learn how to be on the other end of that spectrum. I think uh, uh, the first example I saw of that was Yevgeny uh, Timoshenko when he won the WPT. Uh, I think it was. Maybe it was the 15K, the player championship or something. Like, this is way back, like yeah. 2007 or 8 or something like that, maybe even earlier. Um, that's a good final table to go back and watch where he won it for, like, I don't know, 1.5 or 2 million or something. Uh, he's just playing, like, every single hand. Uh, this is interesting. So, the set, so King 5 suited, opened under the gun, 7's just called uh, about... A little over 30 bigs. Wow. Whoa. Man, if he checks this one over, this could be this could be interesting. Or does he just think that the guy won't fold? Because like who has a seven here? This is a pretty crazy run out. I really like a check or a very small bet here. Um against Pavel. Because I think Pavel's gonna look at this board and understand that like I don't think he's going to have small bets here. Pavel's either going to have checks or big bets. And I don't think you're getting a lot of value by going big here. Like it's not, I don't think Pavel's like, obviously smart money has more, way more sevens in his range to, uh, after defending the big blind. Pavel doesn't have that many, but he's going to understand that like, it's so infrequent that he has a seven here. I, I think on this run out, like you got to give Pavel some rope. I think you just have to. I think you either make a small block bet and try to get raised or get called the chop and win the money. Wow, I was just gonna say, does he ever go all in? I swear, I was just thinking like, does that, that, that crazy, that sizing is so crazy. And it, man, it really worked out for him there. I, I, it's, that's, that's, that's a wild hand to put our, our friend Smart Money into the chip lead nine million and Pavel just 
maybe he would have done it anyway, right? With a small bet. Maybe it would have been that he was just going for it there. But yeah, that was uh that was quite a run out. So the way that Pavel looks at that spot is he sees that bet and understands on this board texture that like um they're chopping a lot. And it's basically like the first person that goes all in wins in those hands a lot of the time. Um, and he saw all that money in the middle and he's like, this guy actually does this and then folds sometimes. So he's looking at like all the times where it gets through and he ends up with all the chips, you know, with like no showdown. Um, in my defense, my play would have worked too. Uh, if I went small to induce or checked, like he definitely would have bet, but I wouldn't have doubled. Right. Like, yeah. I guess maybe he would have shoved over a small bet but like he's not as incentivized to shove that that's wild dude that is so wild that he shoved there like he doesn't have the range advantage yeah i don't know i guess he's effectively opening the cutoff so he does have a wide range but like it's a big blind range there that's that's some wild stuff So let's see how. Yeah, I mean, this is wide open now. Everyone's got chips here. A lot, a lot of play. Where we knew it, there's more entrance today, deeper stacks, and this is here. We're gonna get a treat forehand. It gets some real poker as there is a lot to play for. The title, the money, hundred thumbs up. Appreciate that. Almost thousand on watching. We are seeing a lot, a lot of of interesting plays today, and that was definitely a highlight hand there. The sevens getting jammed on. Blinds are up eighty one sixty. Play gonna get moving a little here more and. Two suited premium hands. Well, I should say two two pretty good hands here. And AM then has actually calmed down a bit. I think he's really done a good job of showing that early on aggression with the King Deuce off and sort of recognizing how he's perceived in general. And he's sort of tailored it back. I mean, he hasn't really gotten super, super out of line. Even that one spot with the King 10 off, we saw him sort of wave the white flag, right? Which was, you know, you could, you could argue that we thought he would maybe go for it there a bit more. So it's been interesting. And all players interested in this board here is a, Multi-way pot. King Queen has the best hand, although pretty connected situation here. Yeah, something to consider at these final tables. <clears throat> and if any of you make final tables where like there's a there's a delayed live stream, so it's like on a 30 minute delay. You have to assume that the players at your final table are also you know, privy to what hands you played previously at this final table. It's something you really have to take into account. So there's like, there's a lot of levels to this. Like these guys, they should have a, a close friend that's very good at poker watching the stream and relaying hands to them and saying like, he bluffed in this spot. He threw, you know, he threw away ICM in this spot and did this. Like, you know, when Cal's at his, when he was at his big final table, I was watching uh, at the 1K final table. I was watching the stream, like, and and doing my best this to relay hands pot. and information. Eight, yeah, this nine, is crazy. Sorry to interrupt you, but this is a massive. Was that was that wait that seven was that seven million in the pot? Yes. Well, I mean, wow, turns it and holds. It. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but that is a different now a, a completely new situation. All three players around four million. And now 12 million for A and then hit a massive card there. Opens eight, nine off. King Queen suited, just calls, and then the run out was pretty crazy. So yeah, a nice spot for A and then who basically has all the other chips, the other three players combined are effectively his stack. So he is in a big position then. Do you have you have him, right? Uh no. I have yeah, let me pull it up. I have A and then I have Alex is out. Yeah, I have Gurgly and AM then. Okay, so 14 to 8. You got you got the advantage right now. That was a massive pot. So sorry, you were saying about Cal? No, I was just saying like uh if you're ever if you ever find yourselves in these in this type of situation, it may not be this particular final table, maybe live, maybe online, maybe a 109, maybe you know, on, on America's card when there's like the 60, whatever. The the ones that have like uh final table live streams that are on a delay, like you're giving up a lot of EV if you don't have somebody, either you pull the stream up yourself or you have somebody that can like watch it and give you some reads so you can focus. Um, that's just the nature of the game at this point. Like if you're not doing that, you're just leaving money on the table. You have to assume that all these guys are doing that. They either have like 
a peer that's watching yeah or they have it themselves up and they're literally watching us or whoever however they find the the stream and seeing what hands were were showed down because i want to know right i want to know what these people are capable of if they're getting out of line or if they're not you know yeah for sure no and and again it's yeah, it's also in a in a in a in a vacuum on a one or two off basis, or you you know you make an aggressive play or two, and then you can kind of tighten it up. It's just it's all you got to respect. Every situation's unique. Every player they also have history. They play together likely yeah. with two three tables left, maybe before a bunch of times. This isn't the you know the, the WSOP main on GG where there's there's ten thousand entries or five thousand entries. This is these are hundred two hundred three hundred four hundred person tournaments. And a lot of these guys play with each other and girls. They play a lot together. They play, they play, they played prior weeks. They have history. And that's something you also have to remember when you're watching that you don't have all that privy information. How they've how they've battled before, what happened yesterday on Sunday before to get to the final table. So there, there's definitely history and notes and 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 that's why again, poker's so fun, because there's not one way to play. Yeah, that's why like uh tournaments are when you play large field tournaments, you don't have to be balanced in a lot of spots because you're not playing the same spots against the same players very frequently. But once you develop history and, you know, maybe my HUD says that I have, and there's no HUDs on GG, actually there is, right? You know how many hands you have with somebody, how many wow. hands it, you've played with somebody. Is this a blo I mean, this is a wild value bet. The 10-4? Uh, it's only like half pot, right? Yeah, but look at the. I mean, that's a scary board. You could lose, lose to a lot of things here. I mean, I, I'm, this is a pretty, pretty crazy. I think, in my opinion, it's a pretty, pretty thin value bet. Yeah, thin value. I mean, you get blown off here. You got a variety of hands that you're losing to. You got, you know, and, and actually, the queen nine was. He almost got paid there because there is a lot of draws in this too. So uh, that was a very fascinating spot. AM then is impressing me more and more as we go. And he has got 14 million, although a min raise here isn't going to get through. Smart money got a good spot if uh, Queen 4 suited does. Oh, wow. And wow, this could this could change things dramatically. And this is an ICM. Plug this one in. Your, your, plug it in. I mean, he's not. looks like he's not folding the ace-king suited, but there's so many hands you would fold. And queen four are actually live. He happens to be dominating suit, but this is not a cakewalk spot. Still all cards available. Queen four or... Oh, wait. Ace-king suited. Queen not available anywhere. That was a big turn card. Needs a four four only or else that's a big double. A deuce. And nice, smart money is... That was a big moment to put it on the line there. And he did. And, 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 and Mike, that is... That is really close when you're looking around the pay jumps and that you're calling off and there's, uh, you know, there's, there's four left there. You can see the pay jumps, how much it is. What, what do you think? I mean, Ace King suited, that's a lot of hand. You definitely can't fold it. Uh, but that's not that interesting to me, right? Like what does he do with Ace 10 suited? Yeah, you know? exactly. What does that's he do with Ace Queen off suit? Yeah. Plug yeah. it in. Okay, sure. Ace King, Kings, Queens, you're calling, but what about, yeah, what about sevens? What about, what about Jacks or nines or Ace 10, Jace Jack suited, Ace Queen suited, Ace Queen off. What are you doing? So, yeah, a little unlucky there. And then kind of had a potential spot to just run over, right? That was sort of, it was all lining up. And then right away, if he gets a few shoves through, it's even less violent for himself. And the volatility all of a sudden now, he does double up the player in his direct left and all of a sudden doesn't have a huge lead, can't just kind of go crazy. But Greg Gurgley is getting chipped down a bit here. And then has shown actually a similar amount of like awareness as Pavel. And and he showed the willingness to be aggressive as well. So like, um, I think there's like, although he just gave he just gave away twenty five blinds. It, it seems like, um, unfortunately he got called. But like he didn't want to open himself up to raising and getting shoved on by the blinds. And they right. both had like twenty five ish bigs. Uh, and he just thought that like he'd rather take the EV of the shove, which I'm sure is. It's probably plus EV. I don't know how much money he's actually making there. Uh, he just ran into like the nuts. But these are spots that like I've not had to go through too much because the opponents that I play against don't find the proper amount of shoves from the small blind and the big blind. So I can get away with like min raising a lot. And so like at a lot of like low and mid stakes final tables, like you don't have to uh, find those shoves at high stakes people are just going to shove over your open because they know that you can't call with very many hands um, compared to how many you're opening. 
So you have to find some hands that you, instead of like limping or raise folding, you have to have some hands that just shove. Uh, the problem with that is you're, you're probably not very balanced in the hands that you just rip 25 bigs with. Uh, Cause you're just not going to have the top of your range like ever. So it actually makes it more comfortable to call off with a lot of like marginal hands, like eights or that yeah. seem marginal, but you're actually like crushing his range when you call with like sevens and eights in chip EB because like, he's going to have a lot of small pairs and like queen four suited ace two suited, like these types of hands. By the way, Feel free to interrupt me at any time. I mean, no, I, can, I mean, listen, you're, listen, again, number one former Pocket Fives player. I know you got over $8 million in online earnings. You are very alert and aware of what's going on and definitely appreciate having on and getting feedback. Guys, any questions, we'll try to take some too. See you in the chat. Almost 1,000 on watching. We'll have a giveaway. I'm going to queue it very soon. will be a keyword, plus hitting the thumbs up. And then on Jeff Girls Poker Twitter, oh, Mike got that tweet out. That is a... Yeah. Uh, that is a... Giveaway, $50 cash, already 50-plus have retweeted that, so appreciate that. We've seen some very exciting poker. We've seen big pots. This is this has been this has been a treat. I always uh, I say I love I love being on here. I do feel it's like a, I don't want to say a forced study session, but in a way, for me, I love it. I learn. I like it. I like hanging out with you guys and, and getting to see some great poker and taking notes along the way as Nyan's going to go ahead and win that pot. Gurgly got to be... Careful here, getting pretty short. 160k big blind. Pavel did make a big bluff that didn't work out. When you and take in information, like if you watch this in a passive way, like we're kind of talking over it, and and there's some spots that we've missed, but like if you actively watch stuff and think about, like, ask yourself questions during during the hand. Think about what you would yeah. do. Think about why they chose this action, why they did this, why they did that. It's kind of like active, actively watching it. You take way more away. And so, Jeff, like, I think, you know, it's definitely a privileged um, position that you have where, where you get to do that. And um, because you discuss and think about the spots a lot, you probably log, even if you only log a small percentage into your actual, like, mental bank um, of hand histories and stuff that you take with you to the table, even if it's a very small percentage of this, it's, it's definitely helping you. Yeah. Like thinking about sizings, watching hands, hands that are interesting spots where like uh, where really good players are like getting out of line correctly or like jamming the queen four suited, like to someone that just plays poker for the first time, that would seem wild, right? That just learned the hand rankings. Yeah. But like to people that understand, they're like, okay, it seems a little wide, but I kind of get it. So I think it's, I think it's, uh, yeah, watching this for fun is cool, but like you might as well, if you play, learn from it. And like, look at, look at that shove there. Takes a semi bluff with the A4 suited on a big sizing and finds a way to, to make a meal for Pavel there as he is going to be. Not loving that result. He did have six high, though. Pretty easy easy to release. Queen nine suited, 10 million chip leader. Smart guy back to second. Pavel now and Gurgly very short. So what happened in that last hand? He jammed over a turn bet? Yeah, uh, flop or a flop bet. bet. It was a big, big bet. He bet 750. I mean, he bet about a large size percentage to the pot and got, got stuffed on there. Yeah, we may see, like, a really big adjustment by AM then. If if the shorthanded play goes on for another thirty minutes and he sees some of these hands, um, we may see him like pull it back a little bit. But at the end of the day, like aggression is you know go back to the to the three keys of poker, right? Be in position, be aggressive, be heads up. And if you can just check these boxes off over and over and over, you're gonna do well. And shorthanded play is all about that. It's just constant, right? Yeah, it's it's it is it is exciting to see. I mean, four handed is such a big difference too than six, seven, eight handed. Some of the great players as well. I think they've really put a lot of work into the four, five, six, especially in these twenty one 
once you get down deep in a field too, right? You got to be able to play six, seven handed ranges, understand how that changes from eight handed, nine handed. And then of course, heads up something that players probably don't put enough time in. And if you play a lot of tournaments, the big money, huge differences between first and second, it's important to have a good game plan and know both players pretty excited with this board. The ACE though, it's going to make things a little less exciting for the king high flush draw, although he may not necessarily think his opponent has an ace. Thinking his king could be good or a club. Does peel. Four comes. No king, no club. Ace, queen, super clean board. Top two pair. Got to be thinking about how much can I get paid? What does my opponent have? Or does he miss? Does he ever bluff? Do I ever just check it over? Does he miss 10 jack? Does he miss hearts? Does he miss flushes? And no, he's going for big bet. And this will not cause much thinking from smart guy although i mean i guess there's a few hands right you beat there are some hands although that would be a pretty big ask to call that size with that hand yeah on that board texture like all the draws missed right so he's choosing this could get interesting um he's choosing to go with big bet on the river because he has missed draws uh but because the draws miss you could also consider checking the river and letting your opponent bet all of his missed draws uh, the interesting thing, I think Pavel might shove here. This does call wow, flops equity call. king ten over and a gut shot to the jack. Although that is not an over to the situation. Smart guy with aces has him in pretty bad shape here. He's going to need to hit a queen or running clubs. And let's see if he just starts with a call. Maybe you know makes sense, right? You have Oof. other situations where you can just pick up the hand make a better hand fold and as it sees though he does get the eight for a double gutter so all of a sudden from a bad wow. spot i mean this is just gonna rip in and this this is tough for pavel doesn't think long it's got a pure eight outs there it's an it's annoying it, annoying uh bet to be facing with the king 10 when you pick up all that equity yeah yeah that's frustrating for sure smart guy gonna go ahead and just rip it ace queen suited Good news for Pavel is there's going to be a player at risk. The bad news is the player is ahead, and he is going to call ace-queen suited too much hand. This is one where it's very live again, not a guarantee to walk away. The deuce, you never know when you need a deuce. In good shape. To the river now, he is going to need an ace, a three, or a queen, or we are going to see a knockout, and it is a four. Lock the doors. Three-handed giveaway coming. Going to queue it up, and Pavel now super short, and these two titans with a big stack we will have a new gg million champion none of these players have won before there was five titles between two players who went out ninth and eighth that was pablo and Adamar. as we, we could see, see another one. champion and we are going to see potentially right here i gotta get this giveaway queued up man here we go i'm gonna get the giveaway queued up we're gonna see five cards first king queen ace seven is a good start and he is gonna need a miracle not happening 100 percent on the turn Yeah, King Queens um, can't. I don't think you can really fold there, especially when he goes not all in. Like maybe he balances with the top of his range, but a lot of times you can take out the top there and you just find that he has like the Jack Nine suited more and like the Jack Ten, Queen Jack, like suit connectors, Ace X hands that you just have too much equity with the King Queen. All right, I'm queuing up the, the giveaway. It's going to be 50 uh, or $100. Was limb, limb shove deuces there. That's pretty savage to think that Pavel's gonna ISO. Yeah, well, yeah, saying Pavel hello to Lavender. I see you. Good to see you. I see a lot of familiar faces today. I'm having a fun one. 117 already hit the thumbs up. Appreciate all you. A lot of friends of Mike joining us as well. He does do coaching. Where can people look you up? I know Twitter, strong. Strung out 12. There. We with uh, strung out 12, but where else can people reach out to you to to get some coaching or, or yes, uh, strung out coaching at gmail.com uh, for rates and availability. I generally do coaching like the first half of the year if I can fit it in. Second half, I'm just busy with the World Series, and then post World Series, there's either it's either time off <laughs> or yeah. uh, there's some other series after that. Um, online and live that i like to play so well here we got a situation where fives are gonna flat not rip it pre or fold and now post flop have the player in really bad shape but let's see how he's gonna he's gonna call in miracle we've been talking about it that is the first real one we'll see in a while what a what a what a bink there fives has his player crushed 
the ace does come and actually Pavel going to be a little worried though. And in, in, in some respects here, right. As the hand played out, he got called. And although he does hit the ace, like there's also a lot of pairs. He's probably going to think are just going to go re re raise in. So did he three bet not all in? Uh, yeah. Three bet pre and, and uh smart guy. Then f uh, flatted and then called the flop. Dude, he threw that not all in off of like 16 bigs or something. Uh, let's see, 100, 200, yeah. I mean, he's got 25 now, and there was some money that went in that is on the so flop. wild. Like, that's, I would be thinking about that a lot. Like, what, and so here he, I think, min raised ish with aces. There's a pot's 875. Yeah. Aces are getting thrown around a bit now as all players healthy. Giveaways live. GG Poker Space Mike Space. Your GG Poker username. We'll get that a little bit to queue up. So it's going to be either 50 or 100, although at the moment it's looking more likely 50. But, hey, I'm not going to bet against Pavel. What was my first pick? I think he was chip leader at the time. Yeah, I believe if if you guys search uh, "strung out poker," uh, that's that was my favorite band growing up. That's why, and it was one of my usernames uh, on Stars. But uh, if you search "strung out poker," my Gumroad page will come up with like my training. I've done like uh, training courses with B. Paris, with Alex Fitzgerald, um, and then I have a few of my own, uh, just my own takes on on some things. But uh, you can sign up for, there's a free one hour video on uh, the biggest mistakes at low and mid stakes. And you just put your email in and you get a free hour video. You can put zero in for the cost. Don't send me a dollar, please. It doesn't go to me anyway. It goes to the company uh, that runs the platform uh, and you can get a free hour of video. So. And wow, this is this is uh, quite a run out for Pavel. He had the best hand the whole way, but the picks up the spades. I like the big sizing. Some some hands he might continuation bet with yeah. with backdoor spades. So kind of again very aware of the situation. And now if you're smart, you know it's uh, it's tough. You have a spade in your hand, a little less likely it's like a miss spade draw. But again, at the end of the day, you have top pair. It's three handed, blind on blind, and top pair not easy to come by. So it's a pretty close spot here. I think the six is bad to have here because it blocks some of his like missed straight and flush draws. Yeah. Uh, but I, I wouldn't blame him for looking him up here. I mean, this guy's been <laughs> wild and out of line like the whole time. He does call bad news for the player smart, smart money. That was a tough hand and Pavel is back to 10 mil peaking i believe in his stack for the day where it all started so uh, kind of crazy how that just all shook out it's been a wild ride but smart money still in there about three million gonna try to hang with the big boys giveaway is live twitter is live action for you as always as promised been a fun day so far still more to come three-handed new champion coming for gg million this is episode 37 season 2023 Appreciate you being here, hoping you're enjoying and learning and taking notes and all of the above, but we've had a fun day and Mike Wasserman joins us as well. And how was a uh, poker rhythm? How was that? You, I know you filmed with Matt Waxman, very good friend of mine. He's been on the show before and you guys did some content out in Vegas before. Uh, what, what are your thoughts with that? And how was that experience filming that? How did your team do there? Yeah, that was with, uh, that was in 2019. I was on yep. uh, Lucky Chewy's team. Uh, we, that was a really cool experience. I, I've never got to be around so many, like just killers at mm -hmm. one time, you know, we were going in and out of Matt's house where we filmed it. And, um, I, nothing bad to say about Matt. Like he's really friendly and awesome. Um, he, he has a, there's a poker rhythm site where we, um, we're playing against each other, just getting used to the format. Cause it's like yeah. four handed and you start and then you start with like a hundred bigs and then you play at 50 bigs. I believe there was an ante and uh, you're playing against people that are like pretty deep thinkers. Uh, so, and, and you're in a shorthanded format. So a lot of my chips fly basically. And um, yeah, it was really interesting and fun. I hope that it, it's kind of been on hiatus since, uh, since COVID, but hopefully it, it starts back up and 
I would love to get in there and battle with everybody. Um, I put in a lot of volume on his site. And uh, yeah, me and Matt get along. I played yeah. a fun hand against him in the main event, uh, like 2015. It ended up getting, I think it was televised, that hand because of him, not because of me, obviously. Uh, I had a boat. <laughs> I'm just a nit, you know. Um, <laughs> well, well, I mean, Matt's had some deep runs. He's gotten like top 45 a few times in the main, and, and he's won the WPT. One of the bracelets. I mean, he's he's a great player. I've known Matt, one of my original friends too in poker. I've known for forever. So, oh wow, yeah, he's also a South Florida guy, and get to see him a fair amount uh, when I can. And yeah, he's uh, definitely he's got a cool thing there. Hopefully, that comes all to fruition. I know he's working hard on that, and that is uh, that's the very cool thing. Poker rhythm. We'll talk more about that. We'll have Matt back on in the future, and he's been on the podcast as well. Uh, Cal, actually, how's Cal doing? He lives in Vegas now. You still keep up with him? You said he, I mean, he backs you, so you keep up pretty frequently with him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he, uh, he hasn't, he, the last couple years, he was, uh, not focused on poker too much. Uh, was fo focused on, you know, stuff away from the poker table, like business and things. And, uh, it's funny this year, he sent me a message. Um, I'm going to go really hard this year on poker. You know, I want to, I want to get back into it and want to make some money. And, um, if you look at his Hendon mob, he's such a savage, man. He's such a savage. Uh, he had a very good year. I mean, he just, and I think he was on in a lot of spots, like at, for very high equity on the bad end of, uh, of variance, but he ended up like, he got 10th in the WPT right after the, or during the world series, uh, he chopped like a 2k and then he, he finished the year off by winning the, the 1k, which is just absolutely yeah. insane. Oh, this is this is a this is sort of gives me vibes of the 2000. Forget what year it was. Man, with Joe Racer, Chong. Maybe it was like seven. What year was that? Six or eight or no? It was it was like maybe it was a little deeper. Where it was like Joe Joe Chiang, the A7 to to Queens, and there was a really short stack, and they got it all in. But this is different now. Kings versus an actual real draw over and nut flush draw. So 12 outs, and I mean again, Pavel, such a professional, so dialed in understanding the situation here doesn't necessarily want to play a, a, a 20 million chip pot when someone has 2 million and the pay jump is massive but at the same time he's got a huge hand and he knows the same is true for king so let's see how this plays out i mean smart money's thinking there's no way these guys are going to play a 20 million chip pot and give me a chance for for a uh, 86k pay jump but that actually might be what happens here uh well i think he with the re-raise here he chose that um for both players yeah I'm, I wonder also, what Pavel though does he just call or does he does he I mean he he's he's got like okay wow wow smart money if anyone is thinking about the Vegas and the Mirage he is rooting for a red card or an ace or else it will be a double and it is uh! oh that looked kind of funky and that is a tough break for everyone involved because now am then who we saw shoving very wide is going to oh, take boy. Into this spot and that is yeah. sick for smart money although he's still in it i mean he's still got a decent shot to ladder at least although am then we are going to pick a winner very soon here for the giveaway as we are getting close to a finish potentially it might be am then running away with it you know uh i mean first of all that was a sick sick hand so much equity it's so crazy how final tables work out in that way sometimes. Like, that's variance, right? He's sitting out. Smart Money was sitting out and had so much, mu like, so much EV just crazy. by sitting out of the hand. Crazy. That's why, yeah, I guess ICM, that's why it is a thing. Like, that's the idea behind it. Is sometimes folding is worth more than, you know, putting money in the middle. Collision effect is a real thing. Usually wow. not a full stack. He size. just called off with 8-7 off there. Which Why? is kind of crazy all around. I'm a little bit shocked by that. Like considering he can just rip in wide and not call off an eight high call there. That is kind of crazy, man. That was that was that was that was crazy. I mean, how many blinds I, is that? It, it, the blinds are still. That was like, if it was too much. Yeah. No, yeah. yeah, it was over ten. It was over ten. Wow. Listen, he's trying to give you give me a dinner. I, he doesn't want to just take you have you lock up the dinner the audience is back in for the hundred that that was that was a wild deal here and, and now is he still going to just keep getting i mean jack eight off now it's a, it's like 30 blinds I don't, I don't think he's just gonna go nuts here but yeah this i can't is, uh, i can't get on board with the seven eight call sorry 
<laughs> yeah, me neither. Um, I'm, and I thought he's played phenomenal. I just that one yeah. just does. I don't get it. He's got these guys pegged, shoving. He can even get some like. Yeah, there was a big mistake. Holds, and now he's just you know calls. He's just. I mean, man, he's got a different school of thought here. He's, you know, I've seen this before, and I think he's getting really anxious to close the tournament out, and he's he's getting a little uh, ahead of his like. Well, okay, that'll help his plan. That'll help his plan because he just smacked a six on the river to take it the heads up and he's got a big lead all of a sudden again. So, hey, don't try this at home. I would say most of this stuff has been inspirational, motivational, beautiful. But the, the couple couple wild calls, the eight, seven off in particular. Wow. Ace, dude, shout out to Ann Arbor, Michigan, the big blue Michigan winning the national championship right there. And they are going to need all the help they can get if you're a Pavel fan because he is – behind and he is out flopped as he is going to need he is going to call with ace deuce and he is treading very thin and we are going to announce the winner here in a second and it will again be either a 50 or 100 dollars ticket it'll be a hundred if pavel comes back it'll be 50 if am then wins audience is rooting and we have a dinner bet mike and jack is going to sure. take it he's got a three to one lead right now i'm sorry a four to one lead pretty crazy that we're, we're actually uh heads up for the the dinner yeah, it's a good, it is a good sweat worked out. You know, you, you said in, uh, I think in the previous one, you said tournaments in tournaments, you got to keep giving yourself chances until variance runs in your favor. You said something along those lines that resonated so much with me, man. Yeah. Like I felt like you were talking to me and through me, like, cause that's how I've made all my decisions and how I've lasted you know, this long and, and you've been in the game longer than me. So like you, the, if you don't think of things long-term, then you just get too wrapped up in what's going on day to day. And that's, uh, it's never a good thing. Even if you're winning or losing, um, it's, it's just not good. So that's part of the reason why I've, I've chosen to be backed for so long is not taking the downswings on my own. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I think for sure. Oh, this and could be very interesting. He's shown whoa, that he wants to call whoa, in these spots. Whoa, yeah. threes, fours, calls it off, needs help. Oh, my goodness, it's set over set on a heads up and ace two. A two Is he going to find a chop? No, mm -hmm. that's that's silly. No, three, four. All right, so we have got a ball game. All of a sudden, it was four to one. Now it's three to two. And okay. this is a wide open game, Mike. I hope you weren't making dinner reservations and picking your spot because it is not over. And this is a... Man, who would have thought, who would have, to go set over set. Uh, I mean, it was all in pre, but still, what a wild hand. And I'm picking the winner here. You guys got another second to hit the thumbs up on the YouTube in the chat. Welcome, everyone. 900 watching right now, and we are playing to a winner, Pavel. Someone will be a new champion of the GG Millions. We'll be back next week as well. I actually just reached out to Cal. I haven't talked to him in a long time, seen if he'll come on the show. It'll be great to have him. If you if you uh, nudge him, tell him I message him on Twitter. Oh yeah, he won't he won't respond on Twitter, but I'll send him a message. I'll text yeah, him. Yeah, actually, I, think I, have, I do have his number somewhere too. I, I just spent a long time since I've. Yeah, he he would be interesting because uh, he doesn't come from like these like solver streets, right? He was he was crushing like the 05 to uh, like two thousand whatever fourteen era, and uh, he would he would provide some unique. Uh, Kind of perspective. Yeah, no, I like. I, he's one of those guys I never really got to know very well. But we, you know, back when I was playing a lot, we would always see each other and talk some and text once in a while. But yeah, he just seems like one of those just like really laid back, cool guys. You know, great guys and uh, someone I'd never got to really get to know. So yeah, it'd be great to have him on. Yeah, he's a good dude. Well. I'll, sure, I'll reach out to him. Good. Well, I guess we're in for. I, I mean, this could be over in one hand, or it could take an hour i mean i have no yeah. idea yeah i'm thinking i'm thinking sooner i mean the fact that the willingness of am then to just run to it, pre. it in pre and uh, and and, yeah. and go for it i think that's just going to be likely uh happening here where it's where it's it's happening soon and, and am then i mean we saw pavel make a, a move here on these boards interesting to know if you're playing with pavel in the future he does attack he like full aggression on the the five liner. I mean, of course, situationally, right? Where it is, what the range is, what happened, which 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 part of the board it is. But again, he's uh, he's shown very aggressive behavior here, and I wonder if AM then might even go the other way here. But he's shown he's just willing to to fire. Let's see if he might even just go for it here. Although I just that's not a typical play where you see people just rip on a big bet on the river in these spots. But he does. I think fold. 
AM then seems to be, um, he's kind of shown his hand of his strategy, like from, from four or three handed down, like him calling the shove with seven, eight, and then calling with the King six, like he's, I think he thinks he's the worst player at the table and is just trying to take 40% where he can find it or 30%. I get it. I, I mean, it. again, he, I thought, he's, first of all, he's played pretty well. The fact that the, he's gone with that King deuce off three bet early, that stands out and resonates with me that he's, you know, aware of situations and who he's going after and what he's doing. So I don't, I don't know about that necessarily, but like, the set the thing I just don't understand is why call off though a short shove and he had the dream scenario right they were both down to like 2.8 million at 200k big blind or whatever maybe he was. doesn't maybe he doesn't know it was the dream scenario like me I I don't know man like calling 15 bigs with seven eight is like not a thing so like yeah it makes me that think surprising. that like he might not be as quite as as aware or studied as we originally uh thought but it's not that bad of a strategy if you think calling off is is generally not good <laughs> but if you think like we said earlier that everyone's better than you then like jamming on people and playing like all in pots against professionals when you're an amateur like that's a pretty good pretty yeah. viable strategy yeah. jamming right not yeah jamming not calling yeah, yeah. Because it gives you two ways to win the hand. When you jam, they fold and you win, or they call and you win, or you lose. But you have two ways. When you when you call it off, and this is why, you know, this is why uh, Vlad folded the ace three. When you call it off, you got to win because your chips are at risk 100% of the time. That's why, like, in, uh, in final table situations, it seems like calling is lower variance in a lot of spots. But a lot of times, like shoving is the lower variance play. Pavel, thank you for calling here. He is going to get an AM then, is back up to a healthy lead. Nice, nice value bet and pretty speculative call, I guess. See what he's thinking yeah. there. Four, six, six, seven, Jack Queen, you know, one spade. There are hands that bluff and, and also AM then willingness to bluff. So, again, part of, part of the nice thing about playing aggressive and playing a lot of hands is you do get paid, right? You do get. Yeah. To, value bet then and it's a it's definitely i will say over the years in different styles playing i feel like it's a lot more fun to play a lot of hands than than play tight right you just kind of get to be in there more you get to mix it up you get to yeah you get to do a lot of you get, you get a wider range and as you get more experience you get more dangerous that's for sure that's not always what gets you i'm i'm a big believer in like do you remember Mehmet mori yeah um he used to play a style where he ran like really tight stats at the beginning of tournaments and he would go deep in a lot of tournaments while wow, he just flops it here. Unfortunately, Pavel doesn't really have anything. Um, and then he would play like a psycho at the end of the tournament. So he would actually like flip his strategy almost. Uh, where he'd be play tight aggressive the whole time and then play loose aggressive at the end of the it, tournament. Yes, I never, I never knew what Mehmet Mori means and or meant until recently, and I remember that screen name. You know what it means, right? Yeah, uh, seize the day or whatever. Uh, well, it means, or some it, form of that. We're all going to die. It means remember you like must that. die. Yeah, which yeah. is actually in tournament poker extremely relevant that was a very famous amir vahidi quote back in the day that when world series of poker was so fun you know those, to watch those streams and stuff but i remember he made a uh, final table i think he passed away a few years later but it was just uh, he was basically saying in order to live you must be willing to die and that's very important in tournament poker because yeah you can't just blind down you can't just hide you gotta you gotta be willing to go for it else you will just inevitably whatever but yeah that i just learned that and i remember that screen name I, all those years i played i never actually knew what it meant or what it was in reference to and yeah that's the that's basically what it means. There was there was a movie it. that came out, uh, I think called Memment Mori, uh, right. in like two thousand like two thousand nine or two thousand eight or something, I think, and it was about a guy that um, lost his memory and then regained it back. But it was all about this like seize the day thing, um, and there's one of the things that I learned early on. This is interesting, but it's a it, there's a four liner out there. So like, I don't think he bet calls here. Wow, he bet calls it there. This is crazy. That was a Pavel gonna now What's be your chip man? leader and just just ace deuce off. Just snap calls it off there. I'm trying to think of bluffs. I guess some king x queen x bluff. But I mean, that was a this is a, Mike. I see you getting nervous over there for the dinner. I mean, they listen. It's it's gonna be a it's gonna be a big dinner, but. 
We're going to be all right. Don't worry. I'm, I mean, this is, it was in your grasp. The seven, eight calls where it all kind of went south. And now you have to put Pavel as a pretty big favorite, I think, just based on, uh, wow. And here we go. Yeah, you're right. Maybe you're right. Maybe AM then is really just, just realizing, Hey, I want to push variants. I want to say, I want a 35, 40% chance to, to, to take this down. Wow. Yeah. He's, he's really, uh, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I mean, my experience is that this player type is um, there's kind of two two ways to view this. He either views it as we said, where he thinks that he doesn't have an edge and wants to just take whenever there's a lot of chips in the middle, he's not going to forfeit pots. Um, he's going to blast off like he might just blast off here uh, with the gut shot. Or he's of the mindset that he's not very experienced and doesn't understand how to end a tournament uh, and is just trying to end it in any way that he can. Like, he, he's just, you know what I mean? Like, one is an amateurish thing, and, like, the other one is, like, being, is being fairly amateurish but understanding, like, how to take advantage of that or how to deal with that. So he at least right. he gave up here. He didn't just blast it off, but or maybe he yeah. will. I mean, it could... Jeff, if he calls, we're gonna have to rethink things. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to do a whole nother type of thought process here. Uh, but that is announced the winner. I just did Andrea Rudu. Congrats, you are the winner. Sturza five six five is your username. You will be getting a fifty or hundred dollar ticket. From GG, it'll be either 50 cash or 100 tournament tickets here, depending who wins. If Pavel wins, you're getting 100. If it's and then it's 50, all of a sudden it's looking more like fit, more like 100. But uh, then again, now here we go. Mid pair, top pair. Pavel going to be a little sticky probably with this player showing willingness to get out of line. But I don't know. He might also just say, hey, I can find a really good spot here. Do I want to be calling? Hey, he sticks on there. And that the, the back, well, having the ace of hearts, helps but it, he wasn't slowing down anyway he doesn't care <laughs> yeah yeah he's in he's in blast mode they're dead even basically i mean relatively 250k big blind 13 to 11 it was four to one now it's about even slight advantage pavel seven eight maybe it's a one of his favorite hands although he does have eight high he's got the best hand six nine suited likely gonna be winning this pot as it's got two hearts and a real draw seven eight off can't imagine doing much i mean he is behind actually i'm sorry six nine suited has the best hand best draw seven eight with the reverse float here yeah gonna get out of the way all right 13 oh this has got this might be one of those ones he's just looking to push it in with oh yeah 550 i mean ace jack just call. Yeah, I think yeah, maybe it's Pavel also realizing yeah. he's trying to take down variants, right? He wants to yeah. go post flop here. And this Definitely. is actually, this could be the tournament here. Ace Jack, Queen Jack. We're going to see a call here. Big favorite needs runners or a queen. Let's see if we get a sweat. Turn sweat available. Nine or queen, or we are going to have a champion. And it is, oh, wait a second, a king. That is. GG's Pavel mounts a comeback, solidifies his GG million title, picks up almost 500 grand in the rubber band. Is that Fedor? Is that yeah? Is he rocking the Fedor? What's he got rocking there? The uh, the emoji there, that the, the 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 icon. He's got a title. Is what he's got. Total wins one. You can yeah. see lower right of your screen. First place, Mike. Lot to unpack. Lot of action. Lot of fun. Give me your takeaways for today. Uh, wow. Uh. Really, what, what I'm thinking about is how drastically different it went three-handed than it did earlier in the tournament. Like, I feel like maybe AM then strategy at the beginning was to go for it just straight up, and he yeah. got played back at immediately, which was pretty wild because for, for Pavel to find that four bet with Queen-10 at the beginning was so savage. Yeah. Uh, but then he really like took his foot off the gas after that and was really a lot more selective 
with the spots that he took. Uh, I don't think any like particular all in besides three handed down was was that interesting. Uh, the one the one thing that I thought was the one spot I thought was really weird was the not all in three bet off of like 16 bigs with ace five short handed by Pavel. Yep. And you'll notice that like even in this spot with the ace jack, he wanted to go post flop. So Pavel re really, like I said, uh, his recognition and his adjustments on the fly were second to none. Like he yeah. he earned this win 100%. Like he saw the how AM then was playing and said, okay, like let's go to a flop and you're gonna blast off when I have a hand. And that's exactly what happened. I mean, yeah, it was, was a I mean, kind of the, a cooler. It's, it's, it was poetic that they finished heads up. That was the very first hand of the day. Queen 10 open under the gun plus one. Three bet King Deuce off from AM then. Four bet Queen 10 off from Pavel, and they were just battling. I mean, I think honestly, it was it was uh, AM then's to win, other than that call off with 8 7. Uh, I think, you know, he was in position just to just, he could have shoved it down, maybe even whittled him down to nothing, never give them a chance. He gave a little bit of life to Pavel with the King 8 suited when he called off with 7 8. That's all he needed. Off and, and that was it. He got, got got back going, took it down, and a really, really well played final table. Really appreciate the time. Again, you guys can. Check out Mike on Strung Out 12. You can search me. He does coaching. He's on social. He's around. And he has officially been the guest on the episode 37 of GG Millions in season 2023. We'll be back next week for another big final table. Big names, big guests, big prizes. We'll see you there. Mike, thank you for the time. Really do appreciate it. And we'll see you guys on Tuesday, 145 Eastern. Same time, same place. We'll see you next week. All right, guys. Thanks for having me, Jeff. Bye.